Hello, guys. Hello. Hello, guys. Yeah. Okay. Hope you can see me. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, I'm good. Zubair, Tushar, Rakesh, Karthik, Anonymous. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, guys, I'm not in India. Okay, I'm not in India. So I'm taking the class like, you know, uh, via the Zoom. The Zoom is sharing, like, you know, uh, via the YouTube. So the clarity of the video will be a little compromised. So try to watch the video uh, in high resolution. Okay, try to watch the video in high resolution. Now, sir, let the others join. Let the others join. I'm just like, you know, for the one, two minutes, we're not going to start the class. Let the others join first. First, if you have any questions, see, the one question will be there in your mind. Most of the students will be thinking like this. Sir, is this session enough for physiology? Previously, I have made revision classes. Like, you know, revision. Like, you know, in the YouTube, you can find, sir, there will be one video, the 12 hours of physiology. Like, 12 hours of physiology. Like, you know, some students, they won't even go through 12 hours, sir, physiology, 12 hours, a little boring, okay, physiology. So, this session is for those students, okay? So, in the very short time, okay, we'll be doing the rapid revision. Sir, even if you don't need, uh, don't study anything, sir, you haven't know anything in the physiology, you don't know anything, you don't know anything in the physiology, still before going to the exam, watch this video, okay, before going to the exam, rather than just leaving the subject, leaving physiology, sir, physiology, a hey, lot of students will be telling, sir, it's very hard for us, okay, it's very hard for us. Those students who feel very hard, at least watch this video. You will be able to answer all the questions. You will be able to answer all the questions, sir. Okay. So I'm going to discuss all the important topics which are needed for your exam. All the important topics which are needed for your exam. If you, if you can go through this, enough, sir. No need to even go through the 12 hours video. This three to four hours of video will be enough. Okay. So it depends on you. Like, you know, if you feel like, sir, I'm going a little fast. If you feel like, sir, you are going a little fast, please tell me. I will extend. Like, you know, it won't be like, you know, three hours. It will be like four hours of video. Okay. But, but you should watch this entire video. You should watch this entire video. If you watch this, enough, sir, you will be able to answer the questions. I'm giving you the guarantee. I'm giving you the guarantee. Okay. And telling you, sir, physiology a kaisa subject. Hai. How is the subject physiology? How many marks you can expect? Sir, according to the, the standard data, okay, according to the data, sir, most of the time you'll be getting eight to nine questions in the physiology, sir. That's it. Okay, eight to nine questions will be coming. If you see the blueprint, they will say like, you know, 15 to 17 questions will be coming from physiology. But these days in FMG exam may eight to nine questions hardly coming directly, directly. See, if, if you have the basics in physiology, you can answer indirect questions. But though I'm the physiology faculty, but still I am saying, sir, physiology ka weightage kam ho gaya. Physiology ka weightage is eight to nine questions. That's it. Eight to nine questions are coming from the physiology. And if you can watch this three to four hours of video, you can be, you will be able to answer those questions. Okay. So in this uh, video, how the pattern is going to be, how I'm going to teach the physiology. Look, I'm not going to give the too much explanation, sir. This is not the time for explanation. Are, esa question, ane to. If this is the question, this is the answer. That's it. Question, answer. Question, answer. Okay. Three hours. Listen carefully and done. Enough. Okay. So without any further late, shall we? Shall we continue, guys? Okay. Forget about my, like, you know, how I am looking. Because the quality of the video is not good. Even I know because uh, like, you know, I'm not in India. So not no proper, like, you know, the camera system is there. So please adjust for that. Okay. So shall we continue, guys? Monster, Divyanshi, Arman. Okay. So without any further late, let's begin. Rapid revision for January 20, FMG 2024. Now, first, we'll be discussing about general physiology, sir. So, general physiology, may the first topic, that is the cell membrane. Okay, I'm going to discuss about the cell membrane. So, please, guys, tell me cell membrane is made up of what? Every cell ka ek membrane hai. Cell membrane is made up of carbohydrates. Okay, first, let me write like this. Proteins. 
कार्बो लिपिड्स एंड कार्ब्स ओके सो प्रोटीन लिपिड्स एंड कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स प्रोटीन हाउ मच सर प्रोटीन आर फिफ्टी फाइव परसेंट फिफ्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ यूर सेल में प्रोटीन सर देन लिपिड्स हाउ मच सर लिपिड्स आर फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट then how much is the carbohydrates carbohydrates are 3 to 5% carbohydrates are 3 to 5% that's it okay so what is the major major proteins proteins are the major composition proteins are the major composition in the cell membrane proteins okay next sir proteins are of how many types cell membrane main cell membrane mein proteins are of how many types sir guys look here imagine this is the cell membrane i am showing you sir a hai sir aapka cell membrane cell ka membrane hai okay so cell membrane may see there are proteins like this proteins which are present outside proteins which are present inside okay so this is the cell membrane proteins which are present outside proteins which are present inside means this protein is present throughout the membrane so what do we call it this is called as integral protein and don't worry about writing don't worry about writing i am going to share the entire pdf in the Dr. Ban Prakash Sir Telegram channel entire PDF you will get don't worry about writing okay integral protein है this one and there are proteins which are either present outside or inside they are not present throughout the membrane no they are not present so these proteins are called as peripheral proteins okay so proteins are of how many types sir integral proteins peripheral proteins two types of proteins are there okay 55 proteins hai na 55% proteins two types of proteins integral peripheral now in your exam they will ask you sir peripheral proteins ka example kya hai peripheral protein ka example sir sir a ankyrin and spectrin hai na they are peripheral proteins hai ankyrin and spectrin sir they are present in which cells they are present in which cells they are present in rbc okay they are present in rbc hai sir a proteins का फंक्शन क्या है काम क्या है व्हाट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ दिस एंकर एंड स्पेक्ट्रम दे आर रिस्पांसिबल फॉर बाई कॉन्केव शेप ओके दे आर रिस्पांसिबल फॉर द बाई कॉन्केव शेप ऑफ द आरबीसी ओके नाउ ए एंकाइरिन डैमेज होने तो म्यूटेट होने तो डिफेक्ट इन द एंकाइरिन एंकाइरिन डिफेक्ट नाउ आरबीसी विल लूज इट्स शेप नाउ इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी बाई कॉन्केव व्हेन द एंकाइरिन इज अ डिफेक्टिव इट कॉजेस द आरबीसीस to become spherical in shape this condition is called as hereditary spherocytosis hereditary spherocytosis now when spectrin is mutated that causes hereditary elliptocytosis hereditary elliptocytosis simple hai bas sir ankyrin hai and spectrin these are the peripheral proteins they are present in rbc they are responsible for the biconcave shape done now dystrophin sir this is also peripheral protein ab ek peripheral protein sir peripheral protein means you know it already sir either they are present outside the cell membrane or inside the cell membrane peripheral protein now this dystrophin where it is present present in skeletal muscles okay inside the skeletal muscles inside the myocytes sir inside the skeletal muscles a dystrophin Absent है तो absent complete absent complete absent a, a dystrophin if it is a mutated or I should say not mutated complete absent then it is going to cause a disease called as Duchenne's muscular dystrophy Duchenne's okay sir. Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Simply, let's call it as a DMD. Sir, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Me, who is absent? Sir, a peripheral protein called as a dystrophin. Peripheral protein called as a dystrophin that is absent. So the muscles become the skeletal muscles become weak. Weak skeletal muscles, sir. Weak skeletal muscles. Hey, so now this baby who is having look. This baby is having Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Now this baby. If you ask this baby to sit. squat down if you the ask this baby to sit down squat down and to stand stand he cannot stand sir easily he cannot stand like this okay he cannot stand see he is using his upper limbs 
to stand to take the support he is using his upper limbs is sign hai sir so in dmd the patients are going to have which sign the gover sign okay so the patient is going to have the gover sign so now tell me sir duchenne's muscular dystrophy okay duchenne's muscular dystrophy is because of complete absence of a protein called as dystrophin okay is going to cause a disease called as uh duchenne's muscular dystrophy and the sign you are going to see is called as a gover sign completed done done, done sir so you can ask me sir is that important are you are fmg exam me this is the question asked in 2022 i think i'm i'm not sure 2022 ja uh for the january exam i think 2022, 2022 also the exam happened in january so this was the question asked okay gover sign is seen in duchenne's muscular dystrophy which is absent dystrophin is absent ho gaya sir so proteins then now lipids ke bare mein cell membrane mein bhi lipids are also there sir how much percent lipids 45% lipids are there who is a major lipid major lipid is a phospholipid my dear guys phospholipids so phosphate attached with lipids phospholipids so cell membrane mein phospholipids are there okay glycolipids cholesterol bhi hai different types of lipids hai but cell membrane mein कौन सा लिपिड इज नॉट देयर विच टाइप ऑफ लिपिड इज नॉट देयर ट्राइग्लिसराइड्स नहीं है सेल मेम्ब्रेन में ट्राइग्लिसराइड्स आर एब्सेंट ओके नाउ फास्फोलिपिड्स व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ फास्फोलिपिड्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट इन द सेल मेम्ब्रेन सेल मेम्ब्रेन में व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ फास्फोलिपिड्स प्रेजेंट लेसिथिन दिस इज अ फास्फोलिपिड स्फिंगोमाइलिन इट्स आल्सो अ फास्फोलिपिड कार्डियोलिपिन ओके इट्स प्रेजेंट सर कार्डियोलिपिन रीसेंट एफएमजी क्वेश्चन रीसेंट एफएमजी क्वेश्चन कार्डियोलिपिन Phosphatidyl, see phosphate, like you know, phospho. Okay, phosphatidyl inositol, phosphatidyl serine. These are all the phospholipids. Phospholipids present in the cell membrane. Okay, so recent FMG exam. Do you know what is the question asked? So this is the question, sir. Cardiolipin. It is mainly present in cell membrane. Okay. even mitochondria also having the membrane mitochondrial outer membrane mitochondrial inner membrane there are two membranes inner mitochondrial membrane outer mitochondrial membrane so this cardiolipin is highly mainly present in mitochondria okay mitochondria okay sir there is a disease okay there is a disease in which anti cardiolipin Antibodies, anti-cardiolipin antibodies are seen in which syndrome? There is a disease which will cause recurrent abortions, which will cause recurrent abortions, sir. There is a disease. Anti-cardiolipin antibodies are present in. My dear students, can you answer? Anti-cardiolipin antibodies are seen in. Any idea? Apla syndrome. Excellent, guys. Apla. Okay, Apla syndrome, anti-phospholipid antibody syndrome. Excellent, guys. Anti-phospholipid antibody syndrome. Guy three, syphilis also true. Okay, syphilis also you can see anti-cardiolipin antibody is true. Okay. Next, sir, in pathology me, pathology me. Okay, this question was asked many times. Sir, phosphatidyl serine. It is a marker of. Sir, see, a X cell cell sir. This cell is very sad. Look, this cell is very sad. It is dying. Okay, it's dying, sir. So it's undergoing what? It is undergoing apoptosis. It is undergoing apoptosis. So these dying cells they express outside. They express something called as phosphatidyl serine on their surface. Phosphatidyl serine is expressed outside on a dying cell. So this phosphatidyl serine, okay, it is expressed. on apoptosing cell okay the cell which is undergoing apoptosis they will show they will express outside they will express phosphatidyl serine okay yes flipping of proteins ex exactly aditya yes yes you are true okay dying cells they will express phosphatidyl serine on their surface okay done sir after this what else you should know is cytoskeleton look cytoskeleton me what you have to know sir inside the cell okay the cell is having some shape right cell ko ek shape hai there is a structure 
so the cytoskeleton is responsible for giving shape or structure to the cell it's responsible for giving the cell x shape okay it's giving the shape to the cell okay so cytoskeleton includes what it includes microtubules microfilaments and intermediate filaments for your exams now you should know sir a microtubule hai na a microtubule sir inside the cell what are there microtubules are there sir microtubules are made up of what sir microtubules they are made up of which protein microtubules are made up of right microtubules are made up of tubulin made up of tubulin okay microtubules are made up of which protein tubulin 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 okay here you can clearly see sir echo these are the tubulins tubulin alpha tubulin beta tubulin microtubules are made up of tubulin okay now on this uh, microtubule sir a hai microtubule on this microtubule sir there is one positive end and there is one negative end ek positive end hai and ek negative end hai microtubule mein positive end and negative end now on this microtubule sir who are there dynein and kinesin two proteins are there dynein and kinesin sir what they will do they will walk they will walk see they are the, these are the legs they will walk on the microtubules they will actually walk on the microtubules okay so look sir dynein see this one dynein it is moving from which end to which end sir dynein is going to move towards look dynein is going to move towards the negative end kinesin will move towards the positive end it will move it will transport the substances within the cell within the cell they transport the substances sir so dynein okay it will move towards the negative end so that a transport is called as a retrograde transport kinesin will move towards the positive end that is called as anterograde transport okay so if this is the microtubule they will move dynein and kinesin they will move they will transport the substances how to remember sir dynein dr doctor we are all doctors so dynein helps in retrograde transport kinesin helps in anterograde transport okay so dynein and kinesin okay completed sir now in one of the exam they have asked sir microfilament ka example kya hai microfilament ka example sir actin and myosin hai na they are the examples of microfilaments each and every cell may not only in skeletal muscle don't confuse skeletal muscles may muscles may actin and myosin are there okay not only in the skeletal muscles microfilaments are present in each and every cell okay ek cell hai to look sir this is the cell so in the cell mein actin filaments hai and myosin filaments hai so what they give they give structure to the cell these are cytoskeletal actin and myosin they give the shape and structure to the cell okay so microfilament examples are what actin and myosin intermediate filaments so they are also like pillars to the cell so cytoskeleton may microtubules hai intermediate filaments and microfilaments are there microtubules microfilaments intermediate filaments they are all giving shape to the cell now intermediate filaments ka examples kya hai examples very simple sir keratin desmin vimentin gfap gfap for glial fibrillary acidic protein guys look listen carefully sir intermediate filaments they are specific they are specific which means they are only present in, for example keratin it is present in the epithelial cell squamous cells it's only present in the epithelial cells squamous epithelium okay desmin it is present only in the muscles not in other cells vimentin it is present mainly in the connective tissue derived cells connective tissue ka cells mein vimentin hai other places mein nahi hai other cells mein nahi hai glial fibrillary acidic protein it is present in the astrocytes something like this. so they are specific to the cells so tell me keratin kidhar hai keratin is present in the squamous epithelial cells desmin is present in skeletal muscles vimentin connective tissue cells like fibroblasts in one of the exam they have asked and glial fibrillary acidic protein is present in astrocytes okay so these intermediate filaments 
you need to know for your exam examples of intermediate filament ho gaya sir intermediate filaments bhi uh, sorry cytoskeleton bhi important points ho gaya now iske baad transport hai cell me cell ke andar transport of the substances sodium going out potassium coming in water coming in water going out okay glucose coming in okay so carbon dioxide is getting transported from the lungs to the tissue so body me hamare body me substances are getting transported by two ways active transport first type active transport ka meaning kya hai atp required means energy is required for the transport of substances transport ke liye energy chahiye okay energy is required passive transport me no energy energy nahi chahiye simple so active transport me bhi two types hai primary active hai secondary active hai primary active secondary active look guys for your exam okay for your exam only what you need to know is sir primary track primary active transport ka examples wherever you see the word atpas 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 if you see the word atpas 100% it is primary active transport or if you see the word pump pump for example see sodium potassium pump or sodium potassium atpas calcium pump or calcium atpas proton atps h plus atps okay so if you see the word atps it is 100% primary active transport simply but i need remember it that they will give you sodium potassium atps is an example of which kind of transport are you know right sodium potassium atps what it will do it sends three sodium out of the cells bring two potassium into the cells so transport is happening transport of the substances are happening example of which transport sir primary active transport wherever you see the word or wherever you see this sgltis sodium glucose transporter sglt1 sglt stands for s for sodium glt for glucose sodium glucose co transporters or look remember this till your exams okay not lifelong sir at least till to your exam sir if you see the word co transporter or sim porter or exchanger anti porter okay you know the things right so sim porter anti porter exchanger if you see any of them they are all examples of secondary active transport they are all examples of secondary active transport so simple they are all examples of secondary active transport now little bit like you know why to take chance sir if someone ask you sodium glucose transporter type 1 where it is present sir kidhar hai sodium glucose transporter type 1 where it is present my dear students pratyusha pratyusha aditi jess multi star abdul samad can you tell me guys a sglt1 kidhar hai sir sodium glucose transporter type 1 is present in intestines sglt type 2 is present in kidneys okay kidneys mein proximal convoluted tubule of nephrons okay sglt type 2 is present in the nephrons ho gaya sir done diffusion ke bare mein sir diffusion is a passive transport diffusion is coming under the passive transport okay sir diffusion how many types sir diffusion is of two types simple diffusion facilitated diffusion sir which substances are transported via simple diffusion simple diffusion via simple diffusion which transport which substances are transported gases like oxygen transport and carbon dioxide oxygen and trans uh, carbon dioxide they are transported via the simple diffusion they undergo simple diffusion sir they undergo simple diffusion okay simple sir a facilitated diffusion ka example kya hai gluts okay gluts means glucose transporters okay glucose the transporters sir gluts are glucose transporters okay so who there are many types of glut glut 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 something like that okay all gluts wherever you see glut the word glut glucose transporter it is example of okay it's an example of facilitated diffusion glucose transporters they transport the glucose they transport the glucose and it's an example of facilitated diffusion okay now gluts ke bare mein thoda important points sir insulin whenever you give insulin okay you know it right okay look sir a has aapka skeletal muscle 
ओके लुक सर दिस इज युअर स्किलेटल मजिल ओके सर इधर ब्लड वेजल है दिस इज द ब्लड वेजल ओके दिस इज द ब्लड वेजल नाउ यू गिव इन्सुलिन सर इन्सुलिन विल कम एंड एक्ट ऑन द स्केटल मजिल से दिस इज इंसुलिन हाँ इंसुलिन नाउ इधर ग्लूकोज है सर ब्लड में क्या है यू हैव इट एंड बिरयानी नाउ यू आर हैविंग लॉट ऑफ ग्लूकोज वेन इंसुलिन कम्स एंड स्टिमुलेट्स इट्स रिसेप्टर इंसुलिन स्टिमुलेटिंग द रिसेप्टर नाउ दिस मजिल सेल इट प्रोड्यूस एस ट्रांसपोर्टर्स कॉल्ड एज ग्लूकोज ट्रांसपोर्टर टाइप फोर नाउ विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस ग्लूकोज ट्रांसपोर्टर ग्लूकोज कम्स इन टू द सेल सो ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ ग्लूकोज ग्लूकोज इज गेटिंग ट्रांसपोर्टेड विद द हेल्प ऑफ विच ट्रांसपोर्ट glut4 glut4 okay when whenever there is insulin whenever there is insulin so the question which they will ask you is insulin dependent or insulin responsive glucose transporters what is that glut4 glut4 okay glut4 is insulin responsive insulin is going to produce glut4 also glut12 this is mainly important for your exam okay sir what is fructose transporter how fructose is the transported fructose the isomer of glucose okay isomer of glucose sir biochemistry fructose sir fructose transporters are glut5 okay glut5 and in one of the exam they have asked astrocytes ke upar okay on the surface of astrocytes on the surface of astrocytes which glucose transporter is present 5 okay glut5 on the on the surface of astrocytes you have glut5 sir so fructose ke liye ek aur transporter hai that is glut11 So, glut five and glut eleven are the fructose transporters. Glut five, glut eleven, glut five, glut eleven are examples of fructose transporters. Again, 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 I'm telling you, sir, glucose transporters, gluts are example of which type of transport? Facilitated diffusion. Sir, placenta may. What is the main glucose transporter that is present? Sir, biochemistry may also these things will come. Sir, placenta may, and even in the fetus may the major glucose transporter is glut one. Okay, glut one. Neurons may. What is the major glucose transporter? Glut three, okay, glut three. So these are the points which I want you to know. Glucose transporters and SGLTs. Glucose transporters and SGLTs are very very important for your exam. SGLTs are example of secondary active transport, and gluts are example of facilitated diffusion. Okay, gluts are example of facilitated diffusion. Okay, okay. हो गया सर. इसके बाद next topic, sir body fluids. Okay, body fluids. so how much percentage water is there in your body total body water in your body mein 60% of your weight 60% of your total body weight is water sir okay now for your fmg exam ke liye what you should know sir how to estimate the total body water how to estimate sir are we doctors don't want all this nonsense okay physiologists like you know they will be doing all this experiments scientists will be doing they will inject an indicator into the body they will inject an indicator into the body they will do lot of nonsense study and they will find out are they will do calculation ah uh, this is the total body water okay this is the extra cellular fluid so what is that indicator which is used to calculate the total body water total body water ko calculate karne ke liye they will use an indicator which is called as a deuterium oxide okay एक्स्ट्रा सेलर फ्लूड्स को कैलकुलेट करने के लिए यू नो व्हाट एक्स्ट्रा सेलर फ्लूड्स एक्स्ट्रा सेलर फ्लूड्स को कैलकुलेट करने के लिए वी विल यूज इन्यूलिन मैनिटॉल सुक्रोज ओके बट इन नीट पीजी एग्जाम्स में दिस क्वेश्चन वाज आस्क्ड प्लाज्मा को कैलकुलेट करने के लिए प्लाज्मा 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 को कैलकुलेट करने के लिए वी यूज रेडियो लेबल्ड एल्बुमिन और इवेंस ब्लू डाई क्वेश्चन इवेंस ब्लू डाई इज यूज्ड टू कैलकुलेट प्लाज्मा एक्स्ट्रा सेलर फ्लूड्स इन्यूलिन Total body water, deuterium oxide, and blood volume calculate करने के लिए chromium tag RBCs. Okay, chromium tag RBCs are used to calculate blood volume. Okay, done sir. So fluids and indicators. Fluids and indicators. Just think, sir. Deuterium oxide. Deuterium oxide. Total body water. Okay. Extra cellular fluids. Inulin. Plasma. Radio labeled albumin. Blood volume. Chromium tag R B C. How I used to remember, you know. How I used to remember, you know. Are blood me, kaun hai R B C. Chromium tag R B C. Plasma me which protein hai albumin. So radio labeled albumin. Okay, easy. So these two you can easily remember. Plasma me albumin hai so radio labeled albumin. Are advanced blood type. Blood me R B C hai so chromium tag R B C are used. Okay, simple sir. Okay. 
नाउ टोटल बॉडी वाटर मेजरमेंट सर एक टेक्निक है टेक्निक सो टोटल बॉडी वाटर मेजरमेंट इज डन विद द हेल्प ऑफ ए टेक्निक कॉल्ड एस टू वट हैमिंगटन मेथड डॉक्टर को वी डोंट वॉन्ट दिस थिंग्स जस्ट रिमेंबर द नेम फॉर द एग्जाम एक एग्जाम के लिए टू वट हैमिंगटन मेथड ओके इज यूज टू कैलकुलेट द टोटल बॉडी वाटर दिस मेथड वर्क ऑन ओके दिस मेथड वर्क ऑन इंडिकेटर डायल्यूशन प्रिंसिपल it works on indicator dilution principle you know it right indicators are used indicators are used different indicators deuterium oxide inulin mannitol sucrose evans blue dye chromium tagged rbcs okay they are the indicators so total body water is measured with the help of indicator dilution principle or stuart hamilton method ho gaya okay so recent fmg exam may be this question was asked that's a coagulation blood coagulation cascade How the blood is going to clot? General physiology me blood topic. Okay, general physiology me blood ka topic sir. Okay, sir, you know clotting, sir, coagulation means clotting. Okay, so how many clotting factors are there? Upper blood me clotting factors say. How many clotting factors are there? Twelve clotting factors are there. You know the thing. Uh huh. So twelve clotting factors are there, right? So now, देखो. Sir, how the clot is going to form? How the clot is going to form? Look, always write ten in the center. Just listen to me, okay? Those students uh, who are not from our eyes, okay? If you are a student from our eyes medical academy, you know. I think by this time you should know. I have taught this many times for the our eyes students. Sir, always write ten in the center. Ten center me, liko, okay? Sir, how many clotting factors are there? Twelve clotting factors, yes, sir. Blood me twelve clotting factors, yes. Sir, twelve came before. Before twelve, eleven here. Before eleven, ten. Already you have written ten over over here. So before ten, nine. Before nine, eight. Eight came before seven. Okay, seven. Okay. So twelve, eleven, nine, eight, and ten. Okay, ten. And here seven, sir. Sir, this pathway which I have shown here, this is called as the intrinsic pathway of clotting. Intrinsic pathway of clotting. So twelve activates eleven, eleven activates nine, nine activates eight, and eight activates ten. Clotting factors. One clotting factor is activating the other. Series of reactions is called as a clotting cascade. Series of reactions, sir. Okay, twelve, eleven, nine, eight. Okay. Are hey, someone is saying, Pratyusha, this is not extrinsic. This is intrinsic pathway. Okay. So J J, listen to this class. You will hundred percent clear. Okay. You will hundred percent clear your exam. Okay, listen. Just to listen to this class, you will answer the physiology questions. So, a is intrinsic pathway, sir. Ah, ठीक है. Then, a क्या है? Extrinsic pathway में which clotting factors are involved? Which clotting factors, sir? Seven and three clotting factors. Extrinsic pathway में which clotting factors are involved, sir? First, three is released. Three activates seven. Seven activates ten. हो गया. A है extrinsic pathway. Extrinsic pathway के बाद सर वन से क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर नंबर टेन इज एक्टिवेटेड टेन एक्टिवेट्स फाइव क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर नंबर फाइव एक्टिवेट्स टू क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर नंबर टू एक्टिवेट्स वन सर वॉट इज टू टू इज द्रॉम्बिन सर टू इज थ्रॉम्बिन यू नो थ्रॉम्बिन प्रो थ्रॉम्बिन क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर नंबर टू थ्रॉम्बिन सो दिस थ्रॉम्बिन वन सिट इज एक्टिवेटेड इट कन्वर्ट्स सॉल्यूबल फिब्रिनोजन इन द प्लास्मा सॉल्यूबल फिब्रिनोजन इन द प्लास्मा to insoluble fibrin so this insoluble fibrin is going to form the clots clot so last me i am asking you is clotting cascade me is clotting cascade me how many pathways are there sir ek intrinsic pathway hai ek extrinsic pathway and from here from 10 sir this is called as common pathway okay so common pathway Okay. Yes. 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 A yeah, Debbie Debbie Gatron. Yes. Like you know, just listen to the physiology. Like you know, Debbie Gatron thing. Like you know, we'll discuss later. Like you know, that can be discussed in the pharmacology also. So here, sir, a is intrinsic pathway, extrinsic pathway, and common pathway, sir. Now, question which was asked in the recent FMG exam. Clotting factor number seven is involved in, sir. Clotting factor number seven. It is involved in extrinsic pathway. Extrinsic me seven or three involved here. Intrinsic pathway me. Twelve, eleven, nine, eight. Common pathway me ten five to one. Ten five to one. What is the last step in the clotting? So it's the conversion of soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin. 
insoluble fibrin okay sir this intrinsic pathway it is measured by look tell me intrinsic pathway is measured by which study x study sir intrinsic pathway is measured by a study called as ptt laboratory study ptt tell you about the intrinsic pathway pt prothrombin time tells you about the extrinsic pathway how much time is taking for the intrinsic pathway ptt ptt measures intrinsic pathway and pt pt measures what extrinsic pathway ka time okay done now you tell me sir a factor number 8 deficient hone to if this factor number 8 is deficient which pathway is affected sir intrinsic pathway is affected and which time is going to be elevated now sir ptt time elevated sir more time it will take more time so factor number 8 deficiency intrinsic pathway affected ptt time elevated factor number 7 deficiency hai to extrinsic pathway affected pt time elevated pt time elevated yes hemophilia yes hemophilia excellent excellent okay so this is how the questions will be asked in your exam typical fmg question is always same clotting factor number 7 is seen in extrinsic pathway clotting factor number 8 is involved in intrinsic path last step conversion of soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin ho gaya done okay sir vitamin k ka role kya hai vitamin k sir vitamin k it activates clotting factor number 27 9 10 with the help of a process called as gamma carboxylation so vitamin k it is required for it is required for gamma carboxylation of factor number 27 9 10 vitamin k nahi hai to 27 9 10 they won't function they won't function kam nahi karega they won't function sir done okay they won't function so with this clotting cascade is also done clotting cascade very important area it's done sir ho gaya okay now let's discuss about endocrine physiology hormones very very important you can ask me sir why endocrine you are starting with the endocrine first okay systems may systems way systems may kyo endocrine first kyo last fmg exam mein sir how many questions came from endocrine three questions came from endocrine three questions came from endocrine sir okay so let's start with the endocrine now steroid hormones iska meaning kya hai anyone sir anyone can you tell me steroid hormones ka function kya hai uh, not not function meaning meaning steroid hai can you tell me what is steroid steroid hormones are hormones derived from okay as akhi bhagwan you are true hormones derived from cholesterol okay so steroid hormones ka examples kya hai so testosterone see i can't answer each and every like you know thing in the uh, the chat box guys because like you know we have to continue also within the next 4 hours like you know 3 to 4 hours we have to continue complete the session okay i'm not going to rush i'm not going to rush but i want to complete major topics important topics okay so testosterone estrogen progesterone aldosterone and cortisol eh these are the steroid hormones so steroid hormones means are biryani is made out of rice okay biryani is made out of what rice we make the make it with rice right rice in the same way a hormone say na these hormones are made from cholesterol cholesterol say okay now sir all the steroid hormones take property hai sir ek property hai they crosses what they crosses the cell membrane okay if this is the cell the steroid hormone it crosses the cell membrane and iska receptor kidhar hai steroid hormones ka receptor the steroid hormone ka receptor cell ka andar okay cell ke andar okay so they have intracellular receptors okay okay now look some important question which was recently asked in the exam recently asked in the exam look sir steroid hormones ka receptor cell ke andar hai sir inside the cell the steroid hormone receptors are there but one more hormone is having intracellular receptor it's not a steroid not a steroid but also remember the t3 and t4 thyroid hormones also have intracellular receptors means receptor is present within the cell not on the cell surface not on the cell surface within the cell surface okay so inside the cell where inside the cell where sir in the cytoplasm no look sir sex 
with T3, T4. Remember like this. Sex with T3, T4. Okay. So sex with whom? T3, T4. So the sex hormones, vitamin D and T3, T4, they have receptor where? Inside the cell only. Inside the cell. In intracellular. But where? Within the nucleus. So these hormones have intranuclear receptors. Okay. So remember it like sex with T3, T4. So sex hormones, vitamin D and T3, T4 co intranuclear receptors are there. Intranuclear receptors are there. Others go, for example, sir, aldosterone ka receptor kither hai? Cortisol ka receptor kither hai? They are having intra cytoplasmic. Within the cytoplasm, this is the question which was asked in the exam. Aldosterone ka receptor kither hai? Intra cytoplasmic. Okay, with, okay? Intracytoplasmic. Aldosterone receptor is present within the cytoplasm. Others have intranuclear receptors, especially sex hormones, vitamin D, T3, D4. They have intranuclear receptors. Okay. Done. Next thing. Sir, look. Just uh, let me um, take additional page so that you will have a better understanding. Sir, ek bar dekho. Sir, a cell hai. A cell hai. Okay, here is a cell. Now, look. Sir, there are certain hormones. Okay. Now they can't enter into the cell, sir. They can't enter into the cell because they are not steroids. Okay. Non-steroid hormones. Where they will come and act? They will come and act on their receptor. This is the cell surface receptor. A hai cell surface receptor. Now once the cell receptor is stimulated, once the receptor is stimulated, do you know what happens? They increases the secondary messengers. In the sense, secondary messenger, hormone a primary messenger. Okay, this hormone when it comes and binds on the receptor within the cell, secondary messenger levels are elevated. Okay, so what are the examples of secondary messengers? CAMP. Okay, CAMP or cyclic GMP or inositol triphosphate. Inositol triphosphate. These are the secondary messengers. Okay, hormones, different, different hormones, they increase the different types of secondary messengers. Okay, they increase different types of secondary messengers. Exam may biochemistry may. Okay, this topic is also related to the biochemistry. This topic is also going to be a little like likely related with the pharmacology also. So different different hormones increases different different secondary messengers. For example, see which hormones. Increases the CAMP level. CAMP levels are increased by, sir, CRH corticotropic releasing hormone and growth hormone releasing hormone. What are they? From where they are produced? Hypothalamus. They are coming from the hypothalamus. Sir, TSH, FSH, LH, ACTH. They are coming from the anterior pituitary. Okay, they are coming from the anterior pituitary. So, hypothalamic hormones. Anterior pituitary hormones like TSH, FSH, LH, ACTH and other hormones like parathyroid hormone, glucagon, not insulin, glucagon, antidiuretic hormone from the posterior pituitary by acting on the V2 receptors. Antidiuretic hormone, if it acts on the V2 receptors, this is the receptor, sir. Antidiuretic hormone acting on the V2 receptor. Histamine acting on the H2 receptors produces acid in the stomach. Okay. Sir, beta HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, and melanocyte stimulating hormone. A pura ka pura hormones, they increase the CAMP levels. 100% like, you know, like very, very high chance that you can get a question. So remember, CRH, okay, CRH, corticotropic releasing hormone, growth hormone releasing hormone, TSH, ACTH, FSH, LH, parathyroid hormone, glucagon, antidiuretic hormone on V2 receptors, histamine, melanocyte stimulating hormone and beta HCG. Beta HCG. They all increase as which secondary messenger? CAMP. Okay, cyclic AMP. They increase as the cyclic AMP in the cell. That cyclic AMP do the other function. Cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A. A protein kinase A do lots of nonsense stuff. Okay, so these hormones increase as the CAMP. Cut them. Okay. Then who increases the CGMP levels? Can you tell me? Who increases the CGMP levels? CGMP levels who increases? Three hormones, sir. Brain-derived natriuretic peptide, 
atrial natriuretic peptide and nitric oxide okay nitric oxide they increase the cgmp simple simple so cgmp levels are increased by bnp anp nitric oxide done okay bnp anp nitric oxide okay these hormones these hormones these are not steroids these are not steroids they act on the receptor they increases the cgmp levels and who is the last fellow last fellow sir ip3 inositol triphosphate who increases the inositol inositol triphosphate so inositol triphosphate levels are increased by okay inositol triphosphate levels are increased by gnrh okay gonadotropin releasing hormone and trh from where hypothalamus okay hypothalamus oxytocin and anti diuretic hormone okay oxytocin and anti diuretic hormone acting on v1 receptors anti diuretic hormone are don't confuse look anti diuretic hormone when it acts on the v2 receptors it increases the cgmp levels okay but now i'm talking about anti diuretic hormone when it acts on the v1 receptor v1 receptor it increases the secondary messenger ip3 okay sir histamine when it acts on h1 receptor increases ip3 sir angiotensin 2 increases ip3 gastrin which produces the acid okay gastrin if it acts on its receptor increases ip3 okay so who increases ip3 simple Gn uh, gnrh gonadotropin releasing hormone trh thyrotropin releasing hormone trh thyrotropin releasing hormone oxytocin anti diuretic hormone on v1 receptor histamine angiotensin 2 and gastrin okay so if you see here a pattern is there sir there is a pattern or a anti diuretic hormone it's also called as what vasopressin okay vasopressin what it will do it constricts the blood vessel it presses the blood vessel contraction con the contraction of the smooth muscles is going to cause vasoconstriction oxytocin what it will do contraction of uterus okay histamine what it will do bronchoconstriction angiotensin what it will do vasoconstriction so all these constricting things if you see something is causing contraction or constriction there the secondary messenger is ip3 there the secondary messenger kya hai sir ip3 okay so again gnrh trh oxytocin anti diuretic hormone on v1 receptors histamine angiotensin 2 gastrin they all increases ip3 levels they all increases ip3 levels okay so secondary messenger don't forget who increases ip3 who increases cgmp who increases camp which hormones okay completed sir uh, from biochemistry say as well as physiology say insulin receptor insulin receptor kya hai insulin ka receptor kya hai sir look a hai sir adipocyte or Sir, this is the skeletal muscle. This is the skeletal muscle. On the surface of adipocytes, there are insulin receptor here. Now, insulin is coming and acting on its receptor. Sir, is receptor ka family kya hai? What is this receptor? This is the tyrosine kinase receptor. So, insulin uses which receptor? Insulin uses tyrosine kinase receptor. So, insulin and insulin-like growth factor. so insulin and insulin like growth factor they use they uses tyrosine kinase receptors okay they uses tyrosine kinase receptor very important for your exam okay chalo let's discuss additional points sir pituitary gland ke recent fmg exam ask your seniors sir ask your seniors recent fmg exam sir pituitary gland mein now i am talking about the posterior pituitary mainly i am talking about the posterior pituitary a kya hai sir what is this structure hypo thalamus multi star excellent you are true the tyrosine kinase pig mnemonic yes true okay but i i don't want to go that no, right now sir this structure is called as hypothalamus sir okay hypothalamus is attached with what what is this this is not like you know these are not the scrotum don't forget uh, like you know don't confuse this is not the scrotum sir okay a hey hypothalamus and this is the pituitary anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary okay hypothalamus may there is a nucleus sir this is a supra optic nucleus right supra optic nucleus okay this is the supra optic nucleus what is pa pvn para 
ventricular nucleus okay so propic nucleus paraventricular nucleus so they produce listen carefully they produce what they produce anti diuretic hormone see they are producing they are producing anti diuretic hormone and paraventricular nucleus also produce oxytocin so where this anti diuretic hormone and oxytocin where they are produced so produced in hypothalamus okay they are produced in hypothalamus produced in hypothalamus but where they are stored stored where stored in posterior pituitary they are stored in the posterior pituitary but produced in hypothalamus how to remember this sir L last fmg question last fmg question so the mnemonic is soap supra optic nucleus produces okay yes sir supra optic nucleus produces anti diuretic hormone and paraventricular nucleus produces oxytocin paraventricular nucleus produces oxytocin okay paraventricular nucleus supra optic nucleus they produces anti diuretic hormone or oxytocin okay okay done what else you should know for your exam sir there is this one patient female patient or like no let's say female patient she had an accident okay accident so accident mein kya hua sir the pituitary stalk pituitary gland is separated pituitary gland separate ho gaya pituitary gland separate ho gaya from where hypothalamus se sir this is hypothalamus and this is pituitary gland anterior pituitary posterior pituitary separate ho gaya so this condition is called as pituitary stalk damage aisa hone to which hormone levels are elevated bad jayega kaun bad jayega prolactin levels bad jayega body mein i am not going into in detail sir i am not going into in, into in, in detail so simply remember pituitary stalk damage hone to okay not shihans this is not shihans okay akib akib bhagwan this is not shihans shihans is different okay so pituitary stalk damage hone to prolactin levels bad jayega so prolactin levels are more means she will start to produce milk okay patient unnecessarily without baby baby nahi hai without baby she is producing the milk so that is called as ga lacto rhea galactorrhea unnecessarily she is producing the milk because of prolactin pituitary stalk damage ho gaya she produces prolactin prolactin cause milk production that is called as galactorrhea okay this one one condition one case ek case sir dusra case mein sir entire pura ek black color here i have shown black color which means damage or i should say necrosis necrosis ho gaya pura pura ka pura pituitary gland necrosis ho gaya okay when after delivering the baby this is postpartum okay pp means postpartum necrosis of pituitary gland okay let me write the full form so that it will be easy for you to understand so postpartum okay now in some females okay in some females may after they deliver the baby after they deliver the baby because of excessive loss of blood from the body because of excessive loss of blood from the body pura ka pura this pituitary gland karab ho jayega means necrosed necrosis necrosis my hindi is not that good i'm trying to manage with the hindi please accept me sir please accept me accept my hindi bear with me okay so postpartum necrosis is called as shihans syndrome is shihans syndrome mein kya hota all hormone levels that is that is sir growth hormone kam ho jayega tsh thyroid stimulating hormone kam ho jayega ACTH, adenocorticotropic hormone, कम हो जाएगा। Prolactin decreases, FSH decreases, LH decreases. All hormones goes down. So that's why I have written all hormones goes down. Even prolactin goes down. Prolactin is also decreasing. Okay, sir. Mother deliver the baby. Mother deliver the baby. But prolactin नहीं है. Prolactin नहीं है तो breast feeding नहीं होता. Failure to lactation, lactation नहीं है. So delivery के बाद, after delivery there is no lactation. Think about Shihan syndrome, postpartum necrosis of the pituitary gland. पूरा का पूरा hormones कम हो गया. Okay, पूरा का पूरा hormones कम हो गया. Now is pituitary stalk damage में all hormones decreased except prolactin. Prolactin increases. All hormones. decreases all hormones decreases 
एक्सेप्ट प्रोलैक्टिन एक्सेप्ट प्रोलैक्टिन ऑल हार्मोन सिक्वेंसेस हो गया नन सो तीसरा क्वेश्चन लाइक नो द थर्ड क्वेश्चन थर्ड क्वेश्चन व्हिच वाज आस्क इन एफएमजी एग्जाम में सर देखो हियर दिस इज हाइपोथैलामस ओके हियर इज अ हाइपोथैलामस नाउ दिस इज एंटीरियर पिटरी सर आई एम टॉकिंग ओनली अबाउट द एंटीरियर पिटरी ओके आई एम टॉकिंग ओनली अबाउट द एंटीरियर पिटरी सर एंटीरियर पिटरी में इफ यू पुट स्टेन्स ओके इओसिन हेमाटॉक्सिलिन एंड इओसिन ओके अरे एंटीरियर पिटरी ले लो ओके टेक इट एंड पुट सम स्टेन्स सर ओके डिप इट इन द hematoxyl and eosin stain h and e stain those cells okay those cells will take the pink color stain that is eosinophilic or acidophilic two cells will take this pink color they will take the pink color so we are going to call them as acidophilic cells who are they sir somatotrophs and lactotrophs so somatotrophs they produce you know growth hormone they produce a growth hormone growth hormone producing cells are called as somatotrophs and lactotrophs produce prolactin so these two cells are acidophilic cells previous exams me questions like they have asked okay somatotrophs and lactotrophs are acidophilic cells ho gaya question okay acidophilic cells are somatotrophs and lactotrophs now oxytocin ke bare mein important questions oxytocin what it will do oxytocin what it will do sir sir one is one thing here i have forgot to write one is uterine contractions kind of uh, like no obstetrics यूट्रस को कॉन्ट्रैक्ट करेगा यूट्राइन कॉन्ट्रैक्शन फॉर द डिलीवरी डिलीवरी पर्पज के लिए एंड आफ्टर द डिलीवरी मिल्क इजेक्शन मिल्क लेट आउट ओके गैलेक्टो काइनसिस ओके मिल्क शुड कम आउट सर द बेबी इज सकिंग द बेबी इज सकिंग द निपल्स द मिल्क शुड कम आउट सो ऑक्सीटोसिन हेल्प करेगा ओके सो ऑक्सीटोसिन हेल्प इन मिल्क इजेक्शन वेरी वेरी फेमस क्वेश्चन एंड प्रोलैक्टिन का फंक्शन क्या है lactogenesis prolactin helps in milk production true or the same can be said like galactopoiesis means same milk production only to confuse you are aapko confuse karne ke liye exam mein okay they want to eat your brain sir so they will use the word lactopoiesis sorry lactogenesis or lactopoiesis or galactopoiesis se pura ka pur se same hai okay pura ka pura they are all same so milk production galactopoiesis or lactogenesis and puberty ke time mein this prolactin helps in breast development true breast development true so prolactin ka ek aur kaam bhi hai sir prolactin it inhibits inhibit karega kisko gnrh ko this hormone ko gonadotropin releasing hormone hai na this hormone so prolactin inhibits gonadotropin releasing hormone a nahi hai to gonadotropin releasing hormone nahi hai to fsh nahi hai lh nahi hai they are not produced fsh lh are not produced fsh lh nahi hai to menses nahi aata amenorrhea okay so remember prolactin prolactin inhibits inhibits suppress suppress gnrh true suppress fsh lh true suppress menses true isiliye lactation ke time mein mother mein lactation ke time mein prolactin hai so lactation ke time mein mother ko menses nahi aata Why prolactin inhibits GnRH, FSH, LH? A reproductive hormones nahi hai to no menses sir. And in male me, male me is prolactin. What it will do? It inhibits spermatogenesis high quantities me. Okay, if you have high prolactin levels, hyper prolactinemia inhibits spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis ko inhibit karega, suppress karega. Okay, prolactin ke baare me points done. points done next sir very famous question question which was asked in the recent fmj exam recent fmj exam a question a gaya a kya hai hypothalamus right so this is your hypothalamus okay hypothalamus se who is coming down g n r h okay this this g n r h is acting on gonadotropes so this is the gonadotrope hypothalamus se gnrh is coming down this gnrh gnrh is stimulating the gonadotropes stimulating the gonadotropes ah theek hai males mein right now i'm talk about the males males mein okay i'm biased sir i'm biased okay sir i'm all like i'll always supporting the males that's why i'm discussing about the male topic sir this gonadotropes now are going to release fsh okay gonadotropes produces fsh as well as lh 
दे प्रोड्यूस एस एफ एस एच एस एल एस एल एच एफ एस एच मेल्स में दे एक्ट ऑन विच सेल्स सर एफ एस एच इज एक्टिंग ऑन सेल्स इन दिस विच सेल्स ऑन दिस सेरेटोली सेल्स एफ एस एच एक्ट ऑन सेरेटोली सेल्स ओके एफ एस एच ऑक्स ऑन सेरेटोली सेल्स सो दिस सेरेटोली सेल्स अभी नाउ वॉट दे विल डू Sir, the serotonin cells produces two hormones called as anti-mullerian hormone and inhibin B. Serotonin cells helps in the process called as spermatogenesis. True. Serotonin cells forms blood testicular barrier. Blood testicular barrier. True. So, a pura ka pura serotonin cells ka important point hai. Sir, now FSH, FSH acts on serotonin cells. Okay, FSH acts on serotonin cells in the testis. See, FSH is coming into the testis. It acts on serotonin cells. Helps in spermatogenesis. And LH, sir, L for L. Remember, L for L. LH is acts on which cells in the testes? Leydig cells. LH acts on Leydig cells. So Leydig cells, what they produce? Male hormone, sir, testosterone. Okay, male hormone called as testosterone. Okay, done. हो गया. Okay, हो गया, sir. Okay, sir, this testosterone males may remember. With the help of enzyme called as five alpha reductase, converted into more powerful androgen, more powerful testosterone called as dihydrotestosterone. Okay, dihydrotestosterone with the help of an enzyme called as five alpha reductase. Testosterone males may it's converted into more potent androgen, more powerful androgen called as a dihydrotestosterone. Okay, okay. So sperms in male sperms are there. Okay, so sperms acquire motility. Okay, here it is there, right? Sorry, sperms acquire motility. Where in which part of the testes? Epididymis. Me, this is also favorite question. Okay, so sperm again, it will come in gynecology also. Sperms acquire motility in epididymis. Epididymis me, sperms will start to move. Okay, so done. Now let's discuss about the hormones. Okay, let's discuss about the hormones. Guys, is it okay? Am I going like fast? Okay, my Hindi is cute. Okay, enjoying the session, sir. If you are enjoying the session, give me the love symbol. Okay, if you are enjoying the session, give me the love symbol, sir. Okay. Ah, I want love. Don't worry. I like you no know, victory. I want the love, sir, from the students. Okay. There is no love, nothing, sir. I mean, like you know, foreign. No love, nothing. No honey. No money. Nothing. Huh? <laughs> Something like that. I'm happy. Okay, sir. Now let's discuss about hormones. Okay, sir, growth hormone, growth hormone. Sir, growth hormone. What it will do? Every student knows, sir, growth hormone. Yes. Okay. Yeah, from Pakistan. Yes. Hindi. Okay. Uh, sir, growth hormone. What it will do? Sir, it increases the blood glucose levels. It increases the blood glucose levels. Okay. Okay. Enough. Enough. Okay. Enough. Love. Love. Enough, sir. For now. Okay, enough love for now. Uh, growth hormone it causes growth. Okay, everyone knows. But growth hormone, remember guys, it increases your blood glucose levels. Okay, your blood glucose ko it increase karega. Okay, but what about the proteins? Protein synthesis it increases the protein synthesis. That is a proteogenesis. Mm -hmm, okay, and growth hormone what it will do? It will cause lipolysis. Sir, are I want growth hormone man? I want growth hormone because if I take growth hormone. Mera muscles ko, okay, it increases the muscles protein synthesis. Okay, I'm going to have big biceps so that I can impress. And what about my extra fat, sir? All this fat, lipolysis, growth hormone causes lipolysis so that I will be having a very good physique, that V-shaped body. I will be getting getting the V-shaped body, sir. Okay, so three things are done by the growth hormone. Don't forget, growth hormone increases the blood glucose levels. True, increase the proteogenesis, causes lipolysis breakdown. Okay. Then who stimulates the growth hormone production, sir? Growth hormone releasing hormone. It stimulates the growth hormone release from the anterior pituitary. Are anterior pituitary say? Okay, you have to get the growth hormone. Growth hormone releasing hormone, which is coming from the hypothalamus. See, it comes from the hypothalamus. It comes from the hypothalamus. It will stimulate the release of growth hormone. Kider say anterior pituitary say. And who inhibits the growth hormone? Sir, growth hormone inhibitory hormone also called as somatostatin. Somatostatin inhibits the growth hormone. Every student knows it. Oh okay, yes, sir. Growth hormone के बारे में three points. Okay. Now important hormone thyroid hormone. 
okay important hormones are thyroid hormone so thyroid hormone what it will do sir it will also increase the blood glucose levels okay but thyroid hormones ka important point say sir sir it breaks down the proteins proteins ko break karega and lipids ko bhi lipids ko bhi break karega so lipolysis proteolysis not that important sir not that important but during childhood me during childhood me thyroid hormones are very very important bahut important hai sir thyroid hormones are very much important for the brain development and skeletal development brain develop karne ke liye aur skeletal develop karne ke liye thyroid hormones t3 t4 are very much important are t3 t4 nahi hai to t3 t4 nahi hai to what happen to the brain development skeletal development nahi ho jayega brain develop nahi ho jayega and skeletal development is not going to be there sir so that condition is called as cretinism okay so cretinism means there is mental retardation to the baby baby mein mental retardation hai and the baby is a dwarf so dwarfism and mental retardation due to hypothyroidism thyroid hormone nahi hai isiliye brain development skeletal development nahi hua so the baby is having mental retardation dwarfism okay this is cretinism sir cretinism now ek aur sir have you ever heard that thyroid hormones increases the basal metabolic rate true thyroid hormones they increases your calorie like you know breakdown sir okay they increases your atp breakdown they increases uh, i should say they increases your calorie requirement okay so how so thyroid hormones they increases the activity of sodium potassium atpases they increases the number of sodium potassium atpases they increases the number of sodium potassium atpases they increases the activity of sodium potassium atpases so more atp is getting broken down are zyada 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 atp is getting broken down sir okay it's getting broken down so zyada atp broken down hone to you require more calories every day instead of using 3000 kilo calories as an adult male i can say as an adult male i require 3000 kilo calories but thyroid hormones body mein zyada hone to if you increase the thyroid hormones more atp is getting broken down you require more calories aha uh -huh. so you can say your metabolism basal metabolic rate increase ho gaya zyada ho gaya okay done sir now what are the two important thyroid hormones thyroid hormones t3 t4 two type of hormones hai t3 and t4 okay sir they are mainly bound with what they are mainly bound with a protein called as thyroid binding globulins in the albumin sorry in the plasma me in the plasma this t3 and t4 t3 and t4 they are bound with which plasma protein thyroid binding globulin important question hai and t3 t4 formation ke liye t3 t4 formation ke liye you require an enzyme enzyme which is enzyme sir thyroid peroxidase thyroid peroxidase to make biryani you have to do lot of process right there are steps there are steps in the same way t3 t4 banane ke liye okay to make it you have to do a process called as oxidation organification and a coupling reaction three steps are there okay three steps are teen steps hai sir okay these steps are done by which hormone sorry which enzyme which enzyme is helping in this three steps thyroid peroxidase okay thyroid peroxidase okay done ho okay. gaya thyroid peroxidase is also completed okay okay let me see how how many of you can answer sir are pharmacology let me test your pharmacology exam going students can you tell me one drug which inhibits this thyroid peroxidase kaun sa drug inhibit karega sir this thyroid peroxidase ko who inhibits this thyroid peroxidase hmm tell me multistar akib mylis hmm. dream harivom nitya nityanand hmm propranolol multistar you are true yes sir carbimazole carbimazole methimazole okay propranolol true propranolol so carbimazole methimazole propranolol they inhibit thyroid peroxidase thyroid peroxidase ko inhibit karega okay theek hai sir done now adrenal hormones ke bare mein discuss karega sir a hai your cute little adrenal gland okay adrenal gland sir 
adrenal gland may cortex a outer most region is called as a cortex sir and inner region is called as a medulla okay cortex may three zones hai outer most region 1 2 3 there is zona glomerulosa outer most region zona fasciculata zona reticularis three regions hai sir zona glomerulosa fmg question produces aldosterone zona glomerulosa produces aldosterone now my dear students aldosterone is also called as ek aur like it's uh, like aldosterone is also called as mineralocorticoid sir isko kya bolte hai mineralo mineralocorticoid okay mineralocorticoid bolte hai isko okay sir zona fasciculata it produces which uh, hormone which produces cortisol sir cortisol ka like one more name is there that is gluco corti coid gluco corticoid sir theek hai and zona reticularis it produces what male sex hormones androgens androgens like dihydro epi androsterone sulfate okay androsteni dione androsteni dione androsteni dione and di- dihydro epi androsterone sir dihydro epi androsterone sulfate okay so these are the hormones which are produced by zona reticularis now medulla me cells hai sir these black color cells dekho medulla me cells hai is cells ka naam hai chromaffin cells okay chromaffin cells sir these chromaffin cells what they produce epinephrine and nor epinephrine epinephrine nor epinephrine okay mainly epinephrine epinephrine is also called as adrenaline okay isko adrenaline bhi bolte hai okay my question to you anatomy say anatomy say sir okay sir whoever taught you anatomy like you know i i hope most of you are uh, students of azam sir so i know you are very good students okay sir boliye sir this adrenal medulla kidhar se developed where from where the adrenal medulla is developed sir come on guys you should make azam sir proud okay sir from where from where this adrenal medulla is developed hmm exactly lalit kumar excellent multi star and yes exactly okay sir adrenal medulla it is derived from neural crest cells say okay neural crest cells okay excellent excellent that's that's what our students are okay so neural crest cells ho gaya now abhi देखो आल्डोस्ट्रॉन के बारे में एंड कॉर्टिसॉल के बारे में अ फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स हार्मोन्स के बारे में ओके देखो सर आल्डोस्ट्रॉन का फंक्शन क्या है मिनरलो कार्टिकॉइड है ना नेम मिनरलो कार्टिकॉइड व्हाट इज दिस मिनरल नेम सर मिनरल सर दिस आल्डोस्ट्रॉन इट इंक्रीजेस सोडियम रीअब्जॉर्प्शन आल्डोस्ट्रॉन इंक्रीजेस सोडियम रीअब्जॉर्प्शन जस्ट वेट गाइस जस्ट गिव मी 1 सेकंड लेट मी चार्ज my ipad charge is decreasing let me charge it okay so aldosterone ka kaam kya hai aldosterone increases the sodium reabsorption sodium ko reabsorb karega isliye mineral lo it maintains mineral balance which balance sodium balance so aldosterone acts on the nephrons and reabsorb the sodium and potassium ko and protons ko excrete karega so these are the three functions of aldosterone at least till exam remember this aldosterone sodium ko reabsorb karega and potassium and protons ko bahar uh, how to say bahar nikal are like no they throw the pot- protons and potassium out of the body okay they ni- nikal jayega body se okay aldosterone ka teen functions hai and cortisol sir cortisol कॉर्टिसॉल का फंक्शन क्या है बॉडी में मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट डजेंट नो गाइस मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट व्हाट दे से इज सर कॉर्टिसॉल है दे स्ट्रेस हार्मोन है स्ट्रेस हार्मोन राइट यू आर ट्रू यस इट्स अ स्ट्रेस हार्मोन सर स्ट्रेस के समय में स्ट्रेस के टाइम में इट हेल्प्स यू इट इंक्रीजेस योर ब्लड ग्लूकोज लेवल्स यस सो दैट यू कैन फाइट यू कैन टेक अ बेटर डिसीजन ओके स्ट्रेस के टाइम में यू योर ब्रेन नीड्स द ग्लूकोज इट इंक्रीजेस द ग्लूकोज it increases your bp it increases your bp blood flow bhi bad jayega okay bp ke wajah se so bp increases but super important mcq let me tell you for your exam 
sir it decreases all your wbc cortisol decreases your wbc sir except neutrophils and monocytes except neutrophils and monocytes all other wbc kam ho jayega okay so cortisol causes a neutrophilia okay neutrophilia sir means neutrophil levels increases but all other wbc decreases okay neutrophils and monocytes they increase but all others decreases now other functions of cortisol is cortisol rbc ko but like they increases rbc and platelets lo ko bhi even platelets are also going to be increased so rbc count increases platelet count increases but all the other wbc goes down except neutrophils and monocytes so cortisol is also completed sir now very very important for your exam parathyroid hormone from where from where it is coming para thyroid gland so parathyroid gland produces parathyroid hormone then who produces the calcitonin who produces the calcitonin thyroid gland sir thyroid gland may excels a special type of cells which are called as para follicular cells para follicular cells sir a para follicular cells what they produce they produce calcitonin thyroid gland produces t3 d4 sab log unko pata hai okay thyroid gland produces t3 d4 but para follicular cells produce calcitonin okay now so para thyroid hormone it increases calcium but calcitonin decreases calcium so these hormones are antagonistic okay they are physiological antagonists okay para thyroid hormone calcium ko increase karega and calcitonin ko kam karega okay decrease karega okay ho gaya now ek aur thing hai sir which is vitamin d which is vitamin d vitamin d also increases the calcium it also increases phosphate blood levels of calcium and phosphate increase karega so vitamin d increases calcium as well as phosphate true but para thyroid hormone look phosphate ko trash karega okay para thyroid hormone remember p t h para thyroid hormone phosphate ko trash karega trash means putting in the trash moose like you know that uh, we say in russian we say like you know moose that, that like you know as i'm here it's coming moose right the waste waste okay uh, the trash phosphate ko trash karega okay done sir okay uh, so i'm good i'm good i'm good venkat i'm good i'm good so <clears throat> done chalo let's discuss important points about insulin insulin ke bare mein sir insulin is very important for your exam okay from biochemistry point and from physiology very important from medicine also insulin kya karega are insulin ka function hai always it want to decrease the glucose always it want to decrease the glucose so these reactions see all these reactions what they do sir a all reactions blood ka glucose ko decrease karega so these reactions are activated so those reactions those reactions which decreases the blood glucose levels like glucogenesis or i should say the glycogenesis glycogen synthesis glycogen synthesis liver takes up the glucose blood se glucose leke glycogen banega so blood glucose levels kam ho jayega okay lipogenesis whenever you have sufficient amount of glucose glucose se lipid ban jayega okay glycolysis glucose leke we are taking the glucose and producing the atp okay we are synthesizing the atp pyruvate we are synthesizing the pyruvate glycolysis taking the glucose synthesizing the pyruvate later on atp so is reactions ko activate karega insulin glycogen synthesis lipogenesis and glycolysis ko activate karega and these reactions ko inhibit karega okay these reactions they increase the blood glucose levels isiliye these reactions are inhibited okay what are they see glycogen lysis glycogenolysis okay gluconeogenesis glucose neogenesis synthesis gluconeogenesis okay sir lipolysis is inhibited breakdown of lipids inhibited okay because sir lipogenesis ko stimulate karega okay and ketogenesis ketone body synthesis is inhibited 
now when i have insulin in my body ketone bodies are not producers are keto acids ketones are acids so acid synthesis ko inhibit karega insulin inhibits ketone body production okay so tell me sir insulin ग्लूकोनियोजेनेसिस को इनहिबिट करेगा करेगा ग्लाइकोजन लाइसिस को इनहिबिट करेगा लिपोजेनेसिस सॉरी लिपोलाइसिस को इनहिबिट करेगा एंड कीटोजेनेसिस को इनहिबिट करेगा डन सो दीज रिएक्शंस आर इनहिबिटेड ओके डन सर नाउ आफ्टर दिस व्हाट इल्स यू शुड नो व्हाट इल्स यू शुड नो अरे देयर आर पेशेंट्स वेयर इंसुलिन इज नॉट देयर ओके इंसुलिन इज नॉट देयर टाइप 1 डायबिटीज मेलिटस टाइप 1 डायबिटीज मेलिटस कंडीशन में इंसुलिन नहीं है इंसुलिन नहीं है तो यू नो लुक सर इंसुलिन नहीं है तो कीटोन आर गोइंग टू बी प्रोड्यूस्ड अरे इंसुलिन लुक व्हाट इट विल डू इट इनहिबिट्स द कीटोन बॉडी फॉर्मेशन अभी इंसुलिन नहीं है तो इंसुलिन नहीं है सो कीटोन बॉडी प्रोडक्शन इज गोइंग टू बी देयर ओके कीटोन बॉडी प्रोडक्शन इज गोइंग टू बी देयर सो कीटोन एसिडोसिस कीटोन बॉडीज आर प्रोड्यूस्ड दैट कॉजेस अ डायबिटिक द पेशेंट इज हैविंग टाइप 1 डायबिटीज मेलिटेड डायबिटिक कीटो एसिडोसिस Now, how you will read this condition, sir? FMJ question, last recent FMJ question, sir. Diabetic ketoacidosis. Ko kaisa treat karega? Just replace the insulin. Insulin nahi hai. Insulin de do. So, drug of choice for diabetic ketoacidosis is insulin. Intravenous insulin. Nahi de ne to. If you don't give insulin, sir, what is the side effect? The baby is going to get cerebral edema. Type one diabetes mellitus. Type one mainly seen in children. okay mainly seen in children so children ko this is the question recent fmg question recent fmg question ask your seniors type 1 diabetes mellitus the side effect sorry diabetic ketoacidosis the side effect is cerebral edema ho gaya sir ho gaya okay so endocrine may if you know this much these are the important points which you which i want you to know okay at least if you know this much done okay so is that clear guys is that clear shall i continue with the gat Shall I continue with the GAT, guys? Chalo, chalo, quickly. Yes, in the next twenty minutes, GAT is small chapter, small chapter, sir. At least you can expect one MCQ, one to two MCQs. So not more than twenty minutes. Twenty minutes may complete karega. Okay. Come on, share it with all your friends. Okay, share it with all your friends, sir, so that they will also be benefited. Are in three hours may if you are getting eight nine questions, that's a very big deal. ओके यूज करो सर ओके सो आल्सो शेयर विद योर फ्रेंड्स सो दैट दे विल आल्सो बी बेनिफिटेड जीआईटी सो जीआईटी में सर इन योर इंटेस्टाइन में लाइक अ पूरा का पूरा लाइक नो द स्टमक इंटेस्टाइन्स में दिस नेटवर्क ऑफ न्यूरॉन सेल्स सर नेटवर्क ऑफ न्यूरॉन सेल सो दे आर कॉल्ड एज अ मीसनर्स फ्लक्सस दे आर प्रेजेंट इन सब म्यूकोसा एंड आर बैक फ्लक्सस व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज अ माइएंट्रिक फ्लक्सस Okay, our back plexus or my entire plexus. Where it is present? It is present in which layer? Muscularis. In the GAT, in the GAT. So Meissner's plexus, my entire plexus. Its work is what? So Meissner's plexus it helps in your GAT secretions. Are GAT me HCL secretion, bile secretion, okay, pancreatic secretions, intestinal secretions. So secretions ko who control karega? Meissner's plexus. And our back plexus helps in contraction of the GAT. जीएटी को कॉन्ट्रैक्ट करेगा मीसर्स प्लेक्सस फॉर सेक्रेशंस और ब्लैक प्लेक्सस फॉर कॉन्ट्रैक्शंस ओके नाउ इन सम बेबीज में इन सम बेबीज में ए मीसर्स प्लेक्सस है एंड आर बैक प्लेक्सस दे आर एब्सेंट एब्सेंट है सर नहीं है नहीं है तो कौन सा डिजीज आ जाएगा द डिजीज इज कॉल्ड एज हिरस्प्रंग डिजीज द डिजीज इज कॉल्ड एज हिरस्प्रंग डिजीज इस डिजीज को एक और नाम है हिरस्प्रंग डिजीज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज एगैंगलियोनिक मेगा कोलॉन भी बोलते हैं ओके सर मीसर्स डिजीज में डिफेक्ट है सर न्यूरल क्रस्ट सेल माइग्रेशन में न्यूरल क्रस्ट सेल्स जीआईटी को नहीं आया ओके दे डोंट केम टू द जीआईटी दैट माइग्रेशन नहीं हुआ इसीलिए मीसनर्स प्लक्सस माइएंट्रिक प्लक्सस नहीं है जीआईटी में ओके स्पेशली वेयर इन डिजिटल कोलन में नॉट एवरीवेयर ओनली इन डिजिटल कोलन 
so this mesos plexus and arbeck plexus are not present either in digital okay digital last part digital colon mein nahi hai isliye a ganglionic nahi hai neurons nahi hai okay so you will see this in which people sir you will see this in people who are having down syndrome mein sir down syndrome mein what is the chromosomal defect trisomy 21 don't forget trisomy 21 is called as down syndrome so is bande mein down syndrome people mein his sprung disease hota okay they are going to suffer with his sprung disease so the baby now imagine so there is a baby sir ek baby hai is baby ko down syndrome hai okay his sprung disease bhi hai his sprung disease bhi hai now do you know what is the first symptom okay his sprung disease hai to delivery ke baad delivery ke baad after the delivery the baby is usually going to pass the meconium meconium okay the baby is going to pass the meconium sir is condition mein a dono nahi hai mesner's plexus nahi hai arbeck plexus nahi hai nahi hai na so jet contraction nahi hai the baby is not able to pass the feces so in hirschsprung disease failure to pass meconium okay that's the keyword failure to pass meconium think about hirschsprung disease okay hirschsprung disease ke bare mein ek bar socho हो गया सर नेक्स्ट सलाइवा वी आर गोइंग टू स्टॉक अबाउट द जेडी सेक्रेशन सलाइवा सर सलाइवा सर सलाइवा इज मेजरली प्रोड्यूसड बाय व्हिच ग्लैंड सब मैंडिबुलर सलाइवरी ग्लैंड सो सब मैंडिबुलर सलाइवरी ग्लैंड इज द मेजर सलाइवरी ग्लैंड बिकॉज़ इट प्रोड्यूसेस 70% ऑफ द सलाइवा ओके सलाइवा सब मैंडिबुलर सलाइवरी ग्लैंड प्रोड्यूसेस 70% ऑफ द सलाइवा ओके सर हमारे सलाइवा में क्या है सो व्हाट डू यू हैव इन सलाइवा सर शेल मी सोचो बच्चों ओके व्हाट डू यू हैव इन द सलाइवा Think, think. What do you have in the saliva, sir? Saliva. Huh? You will be using for many things, sir. Saliva me enzymes hai. Salivary amylase that digest carbohydrates. Salivary amylase is also called as thylin. I don't know why that examiner is like you know he is obsessed, sir. He is obsessed. I don't know who is that stupid fellow. Every time he gives the same question. Okay, I don't know why he is obsessed with saliva. The salivary amylase is also called as thialin. It helps in digestion of carbohydrates. Okay. Now, saliva me a cover enzyme here that is lingual lipase. It digests lipids. So carbohydrates digest happened. Lipids be digest hua. Carbohydrate digest hua. But hamare saliva me there is no enzyme sir. Okay. No enzyme for protein digestion. Proteins ko digest karne ke liye saliva me enzyme nahi hai. ओके सलाइवा में एंजाइम नहीं है प्रोटीन डाइजेशन डज नॉट अकर इन सलाइवा ओके कीप दैट पॉइंट इन योर माइंड ओके नेक्स्ट सो सलाइवा में भी एक एंटीबॉडी है सर व्हिच एंटीबॉडी इज प्रेजेंट इन आवर सलाइवा आईजी ए एंटीबॉडी सो आईजी ए एंटीबॉडी इज प्रेजेंट इन द सलाइवा दिस एंटीबॉडी इज प्रेजेंट इन ऑल आवर बॉडी सेक्रीशंस ओके जीएटी का सेक्रीशंस में यू यूरोजेनिटल सेक्रीशंस में ओके रेस्पिरेटरी सेक्रीशंस में this antibody is present ig antibody so it's called as secretory antibody fmg favorite okay who is the secretory antibody ig antibody okay now stomach me so stomach me important points foveolar cells stomach me foveolar cells hai what it will produce mucus parietal cells in the stomach produces acid and intrinsic factor intrinsic factor intrinsic factor helps in the absorption of vitamin b12 vitamin b12 absorption ke liye what do you require intrinsic factor intrinsic factor of casel casel's factor is produced by kaun sa cell parietal cell parietal cell kedar hai sir stomach mein okay it produces acid hcl and intrinsic factor chief cells chief cells kya produce karega pepsi nogen pepsi nogen sir enterochromaffin like cell ecl cells enterochromaffin cells ओके इंट्रोक्रोमाफिन लाइक सेल्स क्या प्रोड्यूस करेगा हिस्टामिन को ओके हिस्टामिन को हिस्टामिन क्या करेगा सर हिस्टामिन स्टिमुलेट्स द पैरिटल सेल्स हिस्टामिन स्टिमुलेट द पैरिटल सेल्स टू रिलीज एसिड हिस्टामिन हेल्प्स इन प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एसिड्स सर जी सेल्स क्या प्रोड्यूस करेगा गैस्ट्रिन गैस्ट्रिन क्या करेगा गैस्ट्रिन आल्सो स्टिमुलेट्स फॉर द रिलीज ऑफ एसिड ओके गैस्ट्रिन बी जी सेल्स प्रोड्यूस गैस्ट्रिन gastrin also stimulates the parietal cells to release the acid okay so here look sir a hai parietal cell hai okay this is our parietal cell parietal cell ko 
See, parietal cell produces the acid. Okay. But what are the stimulus? Sir, so, parietal cell, look, is stimulated by gastrin. Okay, gastrin receptor. Hai, a hai gastrin receptor. This is the gastrin receptor. Now, histamine stimulates. And one more secret thing is there, sir, that is acetylcholine. Okay. So gastrin, histamine, and acetylcholine, they stimulate the parietal cell to release acid, acid waste. Okay. And D cell, you should tell me. Sir, my dear students, FMG students, come on. Sir, cheer up. Get active. Get active, sir. Two like you know, almost one for one hour 40 minutes completed. Now, come on, come on. Sir, D cells. Hey, kya karega? Sir, D cells produce somatostatin. Okay, somatostatin ye kya karega? HCL ko kam karega. They decrease the HCL. Okay, so somatostatin HCL ko kam karega. It decreases the HCL. So look, sir, poviolar cells produce the mucus, parietal cells produce acid, chief cells produce the pepsinogen, introchromaffin like cells produce the histamine, histamine helps the production of acid, D cells produce the somatostatin and G cells. Okay, G cells also produces gastrin. Uh, G cells produce the gastrin. Gastrin also helps in production of acid. Okay, okay. So stimulus, Deco. Stimulus for acid release. What are the three different stimulus, sir? Histamine, gastrin, acetylcholine. Okay, gastrin, histamine, acetylcholine. They increase the acid release from parietal cell. They parietal cell co stimulate karega. Re, release acid, release acid, release acid. Something like that. So parietal cell produces the acid. Okay, go okay, sir. Now they could pepsinogen. Here I have said chief cell look produces what pepsinogen. Also, one thing I have forgot pepsinogen as well as gastric lipase. Okay, pepsinogen as well as gastric lipase. Okay, sir. See pepsinogen, right? Ogen. Okay, pepsinogen. Ogen means inactive. So pepsinogen is converted into pepsin with the help of acid. Count convert karega. Pepsinogen ko pepsin. Who converts? Acid. Acid convert karega. So pepsin, what it will do? Pepsin digests the proteins. Okay. Pepsin digests the proteins. Okay. Now, next topic which I want you to know is gastric emptying. Gastric emptying. Sir, gastric emptying ka meaning kya hai? Sir, a hai aapka pet. Like you know, we say the stomach, right? Pet. Hindi. Pet, sir. A kya hai? Pyloric sphincter. Sir, if you eat carbohydrates, idli, sir. Okay. South Fellows, like, you know, every day we are eating idlis. Sir, idlis are what? Carbohydrates. We know. Why do we eat idli, sir? Very fast digestion. Very fast digestion. If you take carbohydrates, that carbohydrates will stay in your stomach for lesser time. Okay, for less time. For example, three hours. Three to four hours. So, within three to four hours, they enter into the intestines. They enter into intestines, sir. Okay? So, fast gastric emptying is there for carbohydrates. Three to four hours. Okay? Then proteins go. Yes, of course, if HCL is low, of course, protein digestion decreases, no doubt. Okay. 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 Now let's come back to our topic. Um, proteins. Are if you eat chicken piece, sir, a, a, a chicken piece, you went to KFC and this is the chicken piece, sir. Okay. Now, if you take proteins, the proteins will stay in your stomach for almost six to seven hours. Okay. So proteins will stay in your stomach for six to seven hours. Sir. Six to seven hours. Okay. So that's the gastric emptying time. The movement of food from stomach. The entry of food from stomach into duodenum. So carbohydrates are fast gastric emptying, followed by proteins, followed by fats. If you eat fat, cheesy pizza, sir, pizza, it's going to stay in your stomach for almost nine to twelve hours. Okay. So it stays in your stomach for long, long, long time. So carbohydrates have fast gastric emptying, followed by proteins, followed by fats. Okay. Okay. Stomach ke baare mein important points. Khatam. Now duodenum ke baare mein. Duodenum. Sir, duodenum mein S cells hai. S cells secrete what? Secretin. Secretin what it will do? It increases the bicarbonates. Okay. Acid ko neutralize karne ke liye. S cells in the duodenum produces a hormone called as secretin. Secretin increases the bicarbonates in the pancreatic juice. 
सो दीज बाइकॉर्मेट्स वॉट दे विल डू दे न्यूट्रलाइज एस एसिड एसिड को न्यूट्रलाइज करेगा एसिड को न्यूट्रलाइज करेगा इंटेस्टेन में एसिड को न्यूट्रलाइज करेगा एंड दिस सिक्रेट इन वॉट एल्स इट विल डू इट डिक्रीज इज द गैस्ट्रिक एम्पिंग गैस्ट्रिक एम्पिंग को डिक्रीज करेगा ओके गैस्ट्रिक मूवमेंट ऑफ फूड फ्रॉम स्टोमक इन टू द डिओडिनम सिक्रेट इन डिक्रीज इज द गैस्ट्रिक एम्पिंग गैस्ट्रिक एम्पिंग को कम करेगा ओके नाउ आई सेल्स सर आई सेल्स इन द डिओडिनम प्रोड्यूसेस अ हार्मोन कॉल्ड एज कोलेसिस्टोकाइनिन कोलेसिस्टोकाइनिन ओके सर कोलेसिस्टोकाइनिन व्हाट इट विल डू सर कोलेसिस्टोकाइनिन इट्स अ कोलेगॉग कोलेगॉग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कोलेगॉग एमसीक्यू व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज अ कोलेगॉग कोलेगॉग मींस कॉजेस कॉन्ट्रैक्शन ऑफ गॉल ब्लैडर ओके इट कॉजेस द कॉन्ट्रैक्शन ऑफ गॉल ब्लैडर सो व्हेन गॉल ब्लैडर इज कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड बाइल इज गोइंग टू बी रिलीज्ड बाइल इज गोइंग टू बी रिलीज्ड सो SSLs produces a secretin ICLs produces a cholecystokinin causes the gallbladder contraction releases the bile ho gaya done next brunner glands brunner glands kidhar hai sir they are also present in duodenum they are also present in the duodenum ye kya karega body mein hamare gat mein most basic secretion basic alkaline highly alkaline secretion kaun produce karega a brunner gland se sir so these brunner glands they produce highly alkaline secretion in the gat the ph of the secretion is going to be 8 to 9 8 to 9 so brunner glands produces alkaline mucus highly alkaline mucus the ph is 8 to 9 okay okay stomach mein kaun produce karega mucus ko stomach mein kaun produce karega sir stomach mein foveolar cell produces the mucus duodenum mein who produce karega mucus Who produce करेगा सर? Duodenum में Brunner glands, Brunner glands mucus को produce करेगा. Alkaline mucus, alkaline mucus को produce करेगा. हो गया सर? Come on, cheer up. Come on, sir. Get active again. One more time. Take some water. Have always water with you. Okay? Have always water with you, sir. There is almost forty days. Forty days for your exam. Okay? If you are getting like you know, sir, can we make it? Of course you can make it. Of course you can make it. If not you, who can? okay if you if not always have that like you know positive attitude sir okay always have that positive attitude i know personal story sir there are students let me tell you always student mindset how how it will be you know they always feel like we haven't studied enough sir i i haven't studied properly okay sir still i am feeling down some students will say they don't want to give the exam they don't even want to give the exam sir they will see like you know sir i have ha- haven't prepared properly i don't want to take this like you know uh, i don't want to take the test if i take the test definitely may fail ho jayega so i don't want to take that like you know i i feel shame sir so i don't take the test i know many students at last point of time they okay okay let me take they are very very like you know non they are non confident but still they take the test they cleared the exam for 180s and 190s they cleared their exam with 180s and 190s sir so don't underestimate yourself every student mindset even if there is a top most faculty even if he is preparing for the exam even he will also feel like i am not at prepared still i haven't prepared enough that feeling will be there for every student okay don't go down always motivate if not you then who if not you then who you have struggled for 5 years in foreign country okay you have struggled for the last 6 months you are done with your preparation whatever you have done and a 50% is enough for your exam okay so don't go down okay having said that sir substances okay substances important substances sir iron in fe2 plus form that is ferrous kidhar absorb karega duodenum mein विटामिन बी नाइन दट इज फोलिक एसिड के आप अब्जॉर्ब करेगा सर जुजुनम में जुजुनम ओके जुजुनम द लार्जेस्ट पार्ट ऑफ द इंटरेस्ट इन जुजुनम में एंड वाटर किधर अब्जॉर्ब करेगा मैक्सिमम वाटर अब्जॉर्बशन मैक्सिमम वाटर अब्जॉर्बशन किधर करेगा जुजुनम में मैक्सिमम डाइजेशन जुजुनम में मैक्सिमम ऑब्जॉर्बशन ऑफ एनी सब्सटेंस लेकिन मोस्ट ऑफ द डाइजेस्टेड लाइक नो थिंग्स जुजुनम में सर विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व दट इज कोबालामाइन साइनो कोबालामीन सर 
terminal ileum may vitamin b12 is absorbed in terminal ileum along with intrinsic factor along with intrinsic factor it is absorbed in terminal ileum sir bile salts kidhar absorb karega where bile salts are absorbed okay bile salts after digestion after emulsification of the fats we want to reabsorb the bile salts bile salts ko reabsorb karega hum so where it is reabsorbed terminal ileum may bile salts are reabsorbed in terminal ileum ho gaya of course there are also helpful for neat pg there is no doubt there is no doubt of course these are the questions which will be coming in the neat pg also okay so pancreas ke bare mein pancreas produces enzymes for digestion of carbohydrates helps in digestion of proteins pancreatic enzymes helps in digestion of fats okay so pancreatic amylase carbs ko digest karega pancreatic amylase trypsin ogen chemotrypsin ogen pro carboxy peptidases they all digest they are all proteases they are all proteases digest the proteins and colipase are this is the question which was asked in the fmg exam colipase is produced by salivary glands gastric glands pancreas colipase is a pancreatic a lipase it's a produced from the pancreas it digests the fats okay so trypsinogen from the pancreas chemotrypsinogen from the pancreas okay sir now see trypsin ogen inactive trypsin ogen is inactive so trypsin ogen is converted into trypsin with the help of enterokinase in the fmg exam they use the word enteropeptidase ye dono same hai enterokinase enteropeptidase same hai fmg exam mein question kya what they have asked enteropeptidase is produced by duodenum enteropeptidase is produced by duodenum ho gaya done next gi motility now last topic sir gi uh, gi motility so in the gt me you are not contracting your gt right you are not contracting there is a pacemaker there is a pacemaker who is the pacemaker of the gt the beautiful cell like you know favorite for the boys okay favorite for the boys sir interstitial cell of kajal kajal cell so this is my kajal cell kajal cell there are many kajal cells okay boys are not satisfied with one kajal so they have many kajal cells throughout the jt throughout the jt there are many kajal cells so this is interstitial cell of kajal so in this interstitial cell of kajal me the electric electrical voltage okay the voltage is a fluctuating a voltage hai na sir it is a fluctuating voltage is fluctuating is fluctuation ko we call it as basal electrical rhythm okay so this electrical fluctuation is called as basal electrical rhythm 24 by 7 as a fluctuate ho rahe okay so goals goals like you know kajal goals what they do they are always fluctuating their mood is always fluctuating right sometimes they are happy sometimes they are sad like you no know, fluctuating goals term mood fluctuating our kajal cell ko bhi this electrical voltage is fluctuating this fluctuations are called as a basal electrical rhythm hai a action potential nahi hai these are not the action potential sir they do not cause any jd contractions no they are not causing any jd contractions so these fluctuations basal electrical rhythm is a maximum in interstitial cells of kajal in the duodenum okay in the duodenum may be interstitial cell of kajal hai stomach may be hai cecum may be hai jejunum may be hai so these interstitial cell of kajal which are present in the duodenum they have more fluctuation maximum br maximum br is present in duodenum duodenal interstitial cell of kajal okay ho gaya next abhi dekho sir this is same again interstitial cell of kajal isme kya hai sir these are the basal electrical rhythm so b e r but whenever you see the food biryani sir okay biryani sir i am in foreign okay in foreign sunday every sunday what will be there in the hostel okay biryani so today sir biryani is going to come for me come to my flat okay so today which nervous system is going to be active in my body now sir thinking about biryani parasympathetic nervous system so para okay sympathetic nervous system is going to release acetylcholine so acetylcholine acts on the interstitial cell of kajal now in the basal electrical rhythm look sir there are these spikes coming voltage spikes voltage spikes are coming these are called as spike potential they are the real action potential okay on the basal electrical rhythm on the basal electrical rhythm you are getting this spike potentials 
the spike potentials or the action potentials they will lead to the contraction okay they will lead to the contraction jt motility they will lead to the contraction peristalsis okay done sir ho gaya okay so the spike potentials are the real action potentials basal electrical rhythm is not the action potential now sir i am asking you one question sir fasting ke time mein you are not eating anything no you are not eating anything fasting ke time mein sir your jt have any contractions yes even during fasting your jt is contracting okay your jt may contractions hai isko kya bolte hai migratory motor complex mmc so migratory motor complex is seen during fasting ke samay mein which hormone is responsible for this migratory motor complex mmc migratory motor complex is because of motilin kyo sir you haven't ate anything okay you haven't ate anything but why jt is contracting because to remove any leftover material leftover material ko clean karne ke liye so isiliye this migratory motor complex is called as broomstick of jt or home keeping okay so home keeper means cleaning okay so broomstick of jt or housekeeper of jt okay or housekeeper of the jt it's a migratory motor complex seen during fasting ke samay mein and mediated by motilin okay mediated by motilin so after eating okay after eating fed state mein ah food is there in your body sir fed state mein fed state mein two types of contractions will occur okay two types of contractions will occur one is called as a segmentation and peristalsis सेगमेंटेशन पेरिस्टाइल्सिस देखो गाइस व्हेन यू ईट द फूड से ए है सर दिस इज द फूड हियर इज द फुटबॉलर्स ओके हियर इज द फुटबॉलर्स ओके हियर इज द फुटबॉलर्स नाउ देखो सर पेरिस्टाइल्सिस का मीनिंग क्या है सी द फर्स्ट एरिया स्टार्टिंग एरिया कॉन्ट्रैक्ट हो गया द प्रोक्सिमल सेगमेंट इज कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड एंड द डिस्टल सेगमेंट इज रिलैक्स्ड ओके प्रोक्सिमल सेगमेंट इज कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड एंड द डिस्टल सेगमेंट इज रिलैक्स्ड सो फूड इज ओनली मूविंग इन वन डायरेक्शन food only moves in one direction sir food moves only in one direction so what do we call it this is called as peristalsis peristalsis only in one direction okay to prevent the regurgitation proximal segment contract hua distal segment relax ho gaya so this is called as peristalsis okay now so proximal segment dekho a proximal segment hai na a contract ho gaya because of which neurotransmitters acetylcholine and substance p acetylcholine and substance p causes the contraction of proximal segment and a distal segment hai a relax ho gaya because of nitric oxide and vasoactive intestinal peptide so nitric oxide and vasoactive intestinal peptide dilate kiya okay causes relaxation then a kya hai sir this is what sir mixing ke liye food ko mix karne ke liye एंड डाइजेस्ट करने के लिए सर पेरिस्टालसिस इज फॉर प्रोपल्शन ऑफ फूड ओके सर पेरिस्टालसिस इज फॉर द प्रोपल्शन ऑफ फूड बट मिक्सिंग करने के लिए ओके व्हाट वी हैव सर बोथ द प्रोक्सिमल सेगमेंट डिस्टल सेगमेंट बोथ आर कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड समटाइम्स फूड मूव्स फॉरवर्ड एंड बैकवर्ड फूड इज मूविंग फॉरवर्ड एंड बैकवर्ड बोथ द एरोस इज इंपॉर्टेंट both forward backward movement will be there so food will be mixed mixed and digested food will be mixed and digested so that is called as segmentation so segmentation mein dono movement anterior movement hai backward movement hai both dono movement for the mixing that is called as segmentation for propulsion one way one way that is peristalsis so ho gaya sir jt bhi ho gaya okay so 20 minutes mein jt khatam hua next come on quickly quickly sir now shall we begin with the cardiovascular system shall we begin with the cardiovascular system come on guys cheer up cheer up cardiovascular system important very very important hmm sir i am giving my love for you okay sir my love for you okay cardiovascular systems okay we boys have many hearts okay to so that we can share with many okay chalo continue <clears throat> so cardiovascular system may what are the important points look first heart sounds okay 
heart sounds <coughs> sir s1 heart sound is seen during hmm? s1 heart sound is seen during which phase of the cardiac cycle are cardiac cycle mein systole hai diastole hai you know it systole mein sub phases hai isovolumetric contraction rapid ejection phase slow ejection phase i am not going into that thing right now are s1 first heart sound when you will see isovolumetric contraction ke time mein first heart sound s2 heart sound second heart sound is seen during which phase of the cardiac cycle proto diastole time mein are if you this is the recent neat pg question recent neat pg ka question sir in that exam mein they didn't give this proto diastole nahi hai if you don't see that then the next best answer is isovolumetric relaxation so isovolumetric relaxation ke time mein s2 heart sound so s3 and s4 heart sounds usually you don't hear them until unless if there is some pathology so s3 heart sound is heard during rapid ventricular filling rapid ventricular filling ke samay mein you feel the s3 heart sound and s4 heart sound is seen during atrial contraction atrial contraction ke samay mein usually they are not heard okay usually they are not heard because both of them they are low pitch heart sounds okay usually they are not heard sir you can't hear them so i hope i hope is exam mein they will ask you about the heart sound one heart sound s1 s2 s3 s4 s1 isovolumetric contraction s2 isovolumetric relaxation s1 isovolumetric contraction s2 isovolumetric relaxation but the best answer is proto diastole always the best answer is proto diastole if you don't find this answer isovolumetric relaxation s3 rapid ventricular filling s4 atrial contraction yes am i right okay next sir murmur they will ask about the murmur recent neat pg question may this is the question which was asked okay this is the question which was asked dekho guys three murmurs i want you to know ek do aur teen sir look s1 and s2 heart sounds ke beech mein which phase is there systole and between s2 and s1 again there is diastole okay so s1 s2 s1 again s1 s2 s1 so systole diastole so dekho first type of murmur it's a hollow systolic throughout the systole there is a murmur aha a hai hollow systolic murmur hollow systolic murmur seen in which condition sir two con three conditions actually that is a mitral tricuspid regurgitation okay so mitral regurgitation mr remember simple mr tr and ventricular septal defect vsd so mr tr vsd tell, tell like you no know, repeat five times mr tr vsd mr tr vsd mitral regurgitation tricuspid regurgitation are mitral and tricuspid valves the side by side mitral regurgitation tricuspid regurgitation and ventricular septal defect in thino defects may in thino pathologies may you will see hollow systolic murmur very important just by heart it okay next sir crescendo decrescendo murmur see this is also throughout the systole throughout the systole but increasing the sound in intensity zzz. increase in intensity decreasing increasing decreasing so isko kya kehte hai crescendo decrescendo murmur seen in pulmonic and aortic stenosis okay pulmonic stenosis aortic stenosis also in a condition called as hockam hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy okay hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy samay mein bhi holo systo sorry crescendo decrescendo murmur you can hear it okay done completed sir ek aur murmur hai da dekho sir this murmur is present in systole as well as this murmur is present in diastole again systole mein bhi hai aur diastole mein bhi hai so a kya hai a continuous murmur hai machine jaisa okay machine uh, sorry मशीन जैसा मरमर है देखिए मशीन जैसा मरमर है सीन इन ए कंडीशन कॉल्ड एज पेटेंट डक्टस आर्टीरियोसिस ओके सर पेटेंट डक्टस आर्टीरियोसिस में कौन सा मरमर सुन जाएगा लाइक नो यू विल हियर यस पीडीए पेटेंट डक्टस आर्टीरियोसिस सो फॉर मी अगेन रिपीट कल कमर सर रिपीट सर कंप्लीट होलो सिस्टोलिक मरमर होलो सिस्टोलिक मरमर और एमआरटीआर वीएसडी एमआरटीआर वीएसडी डन crescendo decrescendo murmur crescendo decrescendo murmur aortic stenosis pulmonic stenosis hocm aortic stenosis pulmonic stenosis hocm done continuous machinery like murmur p 
पीडीए पेटेंट डॉक्टर सार्टी रेसेस में डन हो गया डन ओके नाउ द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक रीसेंट एफएमजी का क्वेश्चन प्रेशर वॉल्यूम लूप है ओके किसका प्रेशर वॉल्यूम लूप लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल का लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल का प्रेशर वॉल्यूम लूप है ओके सर हाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड इट लुक हियर केयरफुली लुक हियर सर इधर देखो वेरी सिंपल सर ए है एक्स एक्सिस ए है वाई एक्सिस ओके नाउ आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट व्हाट लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल का वॉल्यूम से लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल का वॉल्यूम है एंड लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल के प्रेशर है ओके लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल का वॉल्यूम एंड प्रेशर है फर्स्ट टेल मी अरे लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल इट हैव टू फिल विद द ब्लड ओके फर्स्ट लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल में ऑलवेज 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 कितना ब्लड है 50 एमएल है ऑलवेज 50 एमएल ब्लड है ओके नाउ इधर से 50 एमएल ब्लड से नाउ क्या करेगा सर लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल विल फिल हाउ मच ब्लड इट विल फिल 120 एम एल ब्लड सो फिलिंग सो फर्स्ट फिलिंग हुआ ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल ए टू बी फिलिंग हो गया लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल फिल हो गया लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल फिल हो गया ओके सो दिस इज फिलिंग स्टेज फिलिंग हुआ फिलिंग के बाद लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल क्या होता है लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट होता आई सो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक कॉन्ट्रैक्शन लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल विल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट होने तो लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल में प्रेशर बढ़ जाता सो so, left this phase see the pressure is increasing so how much 80 mm hg 80 mm hg so this is phase is called as isovolumetric contraction ventricle is contracting contraction ke baad 80 mm hg pressure came sir left ventricle mein pressure is now zyada ho gaya zyada hone ke baad what happens aortic valve opens hota aortic valve is going to open aortic valve is going to open when aortic valve is opened look now immediately what's going to start ejection the blood is going to go out the blood is going to go out so this phase may the pressure is increasing to 120 mm hg left ventricle may pressure increases okay but blood is also going out so this phase is called as rapid ejection phase rapid ejection phase okay so phase is first left ventricle is filling after that isovolumetric contraction left ventricle is contracting contraction ke baad blood is going out that is called as rapidly ejection phase blood is rapidly going out rapid ejection phase ke baad sir slow ejection phase blood is slowly going out slowly going out slowly okay pressure is also decreasing left ventricle mein pressure is also decreasing blood is also going slowly slow ejection phase ho gaya blood ejection ho gaya ho gaya blood ejection ho gaya hone ke baad what happens left ventricle relax relaxes so when ventricle is relaxing pressure come ho jata so next phase is like this like this sir so like this iso volumetric relaxation see pressure is also coming down either pressure is increasing on one side pressure is increasing on other side pressure is decreasing so simple sir this is the loop that they will give they are talking about left ventricle left ventricle ka pressure volume loop hai so again i am telling you look Sir, it's very simple. Esa hai to. This is the graph. First filling, first filling. So this is the left ventricular filling. Okay, filling ke baad, isovolumetric contraction. Isovolumetric contraction ke baad, rapid ejection phase hai. Rapid ejection phase ke baad, slow ejection phase. After slow ejection, after the blood is ejected, again isovolumetric relaxation. so they will give you something like this a to b filling b to c isovolumetric contraction c to d rapid ejection phase d to e slow ejection phase and e to a isovolumetric relaxation okay so left ventricle ka phases left ventricle ka phases filling contraction rapid ejection slow ejection isovolumetric relaxation so all these are the phases here explanation also given i have given the clear cut explanation also so it's very simple sir even you don't need to go through the explanation are simply a follow karo bas a follow karo bas sir this is bas okay so done iske baad iske baad 100% you can expect one question from jugular venous pressures jvp sir jugular venous pressures okay so jugular venous pressures mein look are in your jugular vein mein Pressures in your jugular vein, may pressure, sir. 
okay so how many waves are there look sir there are a wave there is a wave c wave x wave v wave and y wave jugular veins may look in the jugular veins may sometimes pressure is more sometimes pressure is less sometimes pressure is decreasing sometimes pressure is increasing okay are fm fmg exam ke liye what you need to know aapke jugular veins mein in your jugular veins mein sometimes pressure increases sir sometimes pressure decreases sometimes pressure increases sometimes pressure decreases so look how many waves are there first of all look carefully how many waves are there sir there are five waves what are they a c x v y a c x v y who are positive waves a wave c wave v wave a c v these are positive waves means pressure is increasing look they are high the pressure is increasing okay increasing then who are negative waves sir x wave and y wave so x and y are negative waves means the pressure is decreasing pressure is decreasing okay so my question to you sir in which which time may okay sir see in which times may pressure is increasing and which times pressure is decreasing okay look are whenever your atria is contracting okay sir whenever your atria is contracting jugular veins may pressure bad jayega a wave is going to form so a wave is seen during atrial contraction x wave is seen during x wave x wave is seen during atrial relaxation when atria relax hone to atria is relaxing pressure in the internal jugular vein also kam ho jayega okay एट्रियल रिलैक्सेशन के टाइम में लुक एट्रियल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन के टाइम में जुगलर वीन में प्रेशर बढ़ जाएगा एट्रियल रिलैक्सेशन के टाइम में जुगलर वीन में प्रेशर कम हो जाएगा ओके okay? कम हो जाएगा सर सर सी वेव सी वेव व्हेन सर वेंट्रिकल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन के टाइम में वेंट्रिकल वेंट्रिकल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन के टाइम में सी वेव यू विल सी सी वेव सो इट्स अ बल्जिंग ऑफ ट्राइकस्पिड वॉल इनटू द राइट एट्रियम डोंट कंफ्यूज देखो गाइस, सिंपल सर दिस इज द राइट साइड ऑफ योर हार्ट राइट साइड ऑफ योर हार्ट सर ये राइट वेंट्रिकल है राइट एट्रिया है सो राइट एट्रिया इट इज इन कम्युनिकेशन विथ इंटरनल जुगुलर वीन फॉर इजी अंडरस्टैंडिंग पर्पस आई एम टेलिंग यू ओके इट्स अ सुपीरियर वीना कह बट अंडरस्टैंड इंटरनल जुगुलर वीन है सर वेन राइट वेंट्रिकल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट होने तो वेंट्रिकुलर कॉन्ट्रैक्शन डू यू नो वॉट है सर द ट्राइक स्पीड वॉल ए है दिस इज द ट्राइकस्पिड वॉल द ट्राइकस्पिड वॉल इट बल्जेस इट बल्जेस इनटू राइट एट्रिया सो राइट एट्रिया में प्रेशर बढ़ जाएगा इंटरनल जुगुलर वेन में भी प्रेशर बढ़ जाएगा सो द सी वेव इज ड्यू टू वेंट्रिकुलर कॉन्ट्रैक्शन कॉजिंग बल्जिंग ऑफ ट्राइकस्पिड वॉल इनटू राइट एट्रिया हो गया सर नेक्स्ट वेव सर ए वी वेव सी प्रेशर इज इंक्रीजिंग प्रेशर इज इंक्रीजिंग इन द इंटरनल जुगुलर वेन व्हाई व्हेन व्हेन इट विल हैपन सर when atria is filling simple are when atria is filling with the blood look dekho sir atria is filling with the blood atria me blood fill hone to sir idhar pressure bad jayega idhar bhi pressure bad jayega okay understood so right atrial filling when the atria is filling right atria me pressure bad jayega idhar bhi pressure bad jayega internal jugular vein me bhi so venous filling okay our atrial filling venous filling wefer wefer venous filling of the atria atria is filling with the venous blood okay come on active active now y wave a kya hai sir y wave y wave is see atria is emptying atria emptying atria se blood ventricle ko chala gaya atria se blood is going into the ventricle atria se blood is going into the ventricle so atria me pressure कम हो गया इंटरनल जुगुलर वेन में भी आल्सो द प्रेशर इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज डिक्रीज सो फॉर इजी अंडरस्टैंडिंग पर्पस लुक व्हाट आई वांट यू टू नो इज सर ए हे राइट एट्रियम ए हे लेफ्ट एट्रियम सॉरी राइट एट्रियम राइट वेंट्रिकल इधर व्हाट इज दिस इंटरनल जुगुलर वेन राइट एट्रियम में प्रेशर ज्यादा होने तो इंटरनल जुगुलर वेन में भी आल्सो प्रेशर इंक्रीज हो जाता When right atria में प्रेशर डिक्रीज होने तो इंटरनल जुगुलर वीन में भी आल्सो प्रेशर कम हो जाता ओके सो विद द प्रेशर चेंजेस विद द डिफरेंट इवेंट्स लुक विद द डिफरेंट इवेंट्स इन द कार्डियक साइकिल 
right atrium a pressure increases and decreases so internal jugular vein may be also pressure sometimes increases sometimes decreases so finally what i want you to know atrial contraction ke time mein a wave atrial relaxation ke time mein x wave a wave x wave c wave c wave is it's in during c c for contraction ventricle contraction ke time mein c wave is going to be seen okay v wave when do you see v wave venous filling of the atria venous filling atria is filling with the venous blood v wave for venous filling of the atria and y wave y wave is seen during atrial emptying y wave is seen during atrial emptying okay atria is emptying the blood atria pressure decreases and internal jugular vein may be also pressure decreases okay and done so so in your exam may this is the normal ac x v y seen in different phases of the cardiac cycle different phases of the cardiac cycle different waves are seen exam ke time mein what they will ask you are kaun sa condition mein which pathology mein jvp mein a waves are absent absent a waves absent a waves are seen in atrial fibrillation ke time mein atrial fibrillation ke time mein a waves absent hai sir because atria is not contracting atrial fibrillation mein atria is not contracting so a waves nahi aata okay sir tricuspid stenosis condition mein very important tricuspid stenosis mein prominent a wave prominent large a wave okay large a wave is going to be seen tricuspid stenosis ke time mein okay sir pathology pathology internal medicine sir these are internal medicine related topics i am integrating i am trying to integrate sir third degree heart block or complete heart block complete heart block ke condition mein or atrioventricular dissociation time mein which means atria is contracting on its own ventricular is contracting on its own both atria and contracting they are beating at a same time they are beating at a same time that's not good first atria should contract later ventricle should contract but if both contract at the same time that is called as av dissociation there you will see which type of a waves canon a waves canon a waves are seen okay canon a waves are going to be seen okay now sir in which condition you will see prominent or sharp sharp y wave okay sharp y descent like you know y is going to be something like this sharp not like this sharp y wave sharply y wave so sharp y descent is going to be seen in cp constrictive pericarditis and constrictive pericarditis ke condition may also prominent x so prominent x prominent y are seen in constrictive pericarditis prominent x prominent y seen in uh, which internal medicine condition which pathology condition constrictive pericarditis okay uh okay i have to charge it just give me one second guys constrictive pericarditis time also look sir tamponade cardiac tamponade i hope you know it sir cardiac tamponade ke condition may be the x wave is going to be prominent prominent x waves are seen in cardiac tamponade but internal medicine may here i want to add one more point cardiac tamponade may do you know how what kind of pulse is seen sir like you know the bp variation like you know there is something called as pulses okay para doxus pulses paradoxus okay pulses paradoxus sir pulses paradoxus is seen in cardiac tamponade don't forget i'm just trying to integrate okay not related to here i'm just trying to integrate so pulses paradoxus is seen in cardiac tamponade okay bex triad is going to be seen pulses tra- uh, uh, paradoxus okay so don't confuse don't confuse wait sir absent a wave seen in atrial fibrillation tricuspid stenosis me what kind of jvp changes are going to be seen prominent a wave canon a waves canon a waves are seen in third degree heart block prominent x wave and y wave prominent x and both prominent x prominent y prominent x prominent y are going to be seen in constrictive pericarditis condition me and cardiac tamponade may be also in cardiac tamponade prominent x wave is going to be seen okay and recent fmg exam me recent fmg exam me recent means one year back one year back sir if a person ko ek person ko tricuspid regurgitation hai to 
medicine medicine related medicine with physiology medicine with physiology tricuspid regurgitation heto 3 jvp changes are going to be seen 3 jvp changes are going to be seen what are they sir prominent y okay prominent y okay see prominent y is also seen here prominent y is also seen in constrictive pericarditis okay but tricuspid regurgitation heto prominent y along with blunted x okay blunted not sharp not sharp blunted x descent prominent y descent and tall v waves okay tall v waves so three things tricuspid regurgitation ke time if you think that sir is this important ask your senior sir one year back this question was asked if you know this one thing you got one mark there are many students who are getting 149 and like no they are getting missing out in one mark mein so you should know this sir tricuspid regurgitation ke time mein blunted x descent prominent y descent and tall v wave okay at least if you want to know sir important tell me only important remember this absent a wave sir canon a waves and tricuspid regurgitation for the exam at least these three things important for the exam okay so constrictive pericarditis mein dono hai constrictive pericarditis condition mein prominent y and prominent x prominent y prominent x okay done sir is that clear guys is that clear hmm <clears throat> now chalo sir do you want a break for 5 minutes do you want a break for 5 minutes 5 minutes break do you want 5 10 minutes break do you want any break just simply relax sir share with your friends ask your friends to join okay no at least you know i want the break like you know let me go and have a sip of water and i get okay let me go and have a sip of water just what 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 a break sir not even a tea break just let me go and have a sip of water and let me come okay just one minute okay <clears throat> guys i'm back so let's continue sir come on share with most of your students share more love okay if more love i will teach more otherwise no <clears throat> i will teach less if you want me to teach more more aggressively more integrations like you know with the, exactly the questions that's going to come in your exam share with more students sir with more love okay <clears throat> chalo सर कुसमल साइन एक कुसमल साइन क्या है सर कुसमल साइन अरे लुक नॉर्मली लेट मी टेल यू व्हाट इज नॉर्मल इंस्पिरेशन के टाइम में ओके व्हेन यू डू द इंस्पिरेशन टेक इंस्पिरेशन आ इंस्पिरेशन के टाइम इंस्पिरेशन में टाइम में योर जुगुलर वेनस प्रेशर डिक्रीजेस दिस इज नॉर्मल नॉर्मली ड्यूरिंग इंस्पिरेशन के टाइम में योर जुगुलर वेनस प्रेशर शुड डिक्रीज if it is not decreasing say lack of decrease okay lack of decrease or an increase in jvp with inspiration this finding is called as kusumal sign so kusumal sign means during inspiration 
during inspiration if you are jvp okay if it is not falling down or if it increases if it increases then it is called as kusumal sign not kusumal breathing kusumal sign are kusumal sign in which condition again kusumal sign is seen in constrictive pericarditis are do you remember about the jvp changes in constrictive pericarditis sir constrictive pericarditis ke time mein prominent y descent prominent x descent don't forget prominent x and prominent y descents seen in constrictive pericarditis okay so also in constrictive pericarditis which sign is seen kusumal sign restrictive cardiomyopathy rcm okay restrictive cardiomyopathy you will see kusumal sign and right ventricular failure or pulmonary embolism for your exam at least these two are repeatedly asked questions sir constrictive pericarditis and restrictive cardiomyopathy may the patients are going to have which sign kusumal sign what is kusumal sign kusumal sign means during inspiration if your jvp is not decreasing it should decrease it should decrease if it is not decreasing or if it increases it is called as kusumal sign so kusumal remember kusumal k for k at least kusumal k for k kusumal sign seen in constrictive kusumal constrictive okay kusmal sign is seen in constrictive pericarditis as well as restrictive cardiomyopathy okay done okay sir in uh, fmg exams okay sir this question is also asked once the pulse wave okay so pulse pulse now guys try to understand the pulse like this a hai sir aapka left ventricle hai okay a hai aapka left ventricle hai now dekho what is this blood vessel sir what is this blood vessel so this is your aorta aorta sir what is this wall aortic wall when left ventricle is contracting tell me when left ventricle is contracting more blood is coming here into the aorta so pressure in the aorta and arteries increases pressure in the aorta and arteries increases okay so during rapid ejection phase ke time mein rapid ejection phase ke time mein more blood is coming more blood is coming so pressure increases and slow ejection phase mein less blood will come so pressure decreases so first pressure increases and pressure decreases okay pressure increases and pressure decreases now now what happens sir after slow ejection phase what happens this wall aortic wall sir dekho this aortic wall closes the aortic wall closes the aortic wall closes so when the aortic wall closes see now pressure decreased okay aortic wall क्लोज होने के बाद आयोटिक वॉल क्लोज होने के बाद सर हियर हु इज देयर ब्लड इज देयर सर ब्लड इज देयर नाउ इस आयोटा विल स्क्वीज आयोटा विल स्क्वीज स्क्वीज टू पुश द ब्लड फॉरवर्ड टू पुश द ब्लड फॉरवर्ड सो व्हेन इट इज स्क्वीजिंग व्हेन आयोटा इज स्क्वीजिंग प्रेशर लिटिल इंक्रीजेस एंड लेटर डिक्रीजेस ओके लिटिल इंक्रीजेस एंड डिक्रीजेस ओके सो दिस इज व्हाट आई एम शोइंग इन द प्रेशर वेव okay pulse pulse wave mein pressure changes sir initially pressure increases in the blood vessels pressure increases and decreases in increases and decreases at this area mein what happens sir idhar ek notch hai na a notch a notch kya hai this is called as a dichrotic notch dichrotic notch dichrotic notch when it happens sir dichrotic notch occurs due to closure of aortic wall aortic wall closed at the exactly at the time of dichrotic notch dekho idhar kya hua sir aortic wall closed ho gaya close hone ke baad what happens aortic wall closed after aorta squeezes squeeze aorta will squeeze elastic recoil so that increases the pressure that increase the pressure okay that increase the pressure so this wave is called as the dichrotic wave okay dichrotic wave this notch is called as a dichrotic notch notch okay let me show you a hai sir notch hai na dichrotic notch hai followed by dichrotic wave after that what happens slowly pressure decreases okay blood goes forward blood goes forward so pressure kam ho jayega so initially pressure increases and decreases and this wave this notch is called as a dichrotic notch question that will come in your exam is sir dichrotic notch occurs when there is closure of aortic wall 
when aortic valve is closed which heart sound second heart sound sir second heart sound that is a2 p2 aortic valve closed a2 aortic valve aortic valve is closed causing second heart sound a2 a2 okay and then i hope this is this is a one question this is a one question which will ask you which they will ask you sir dichrotic notch occurs when there is closure of aortic valve who oh, yes frank starling la okay frank and his darling okay frank and his darling sir no not something like that frank and starling so frank starling la so what is frank starling la tells you sir if you increase the stroke volume sorry yeah frank starling la says sir the stroke volume is i should say better something like this end diastolic volume is directly proportional to stroke volume if you increase the end diastolic volume means you are keeping more blood in the heart instead of for example normally what is that end diastolic volume 120 heart may how much blood you will keep left ventricle may 120 when ventricle contracts how much is going to come out stroke volume 70 ml will come out okay but if you increase if you increase the end diastolic volume if you increase the end diastolic volume for example 200 now do you think same 70 will come out no maybe now 140 will come out more will come out sir more will come out or 150 will come out so if you increase the end diastolic volume stroke volume automatically increases the more you keep in the heart the more blood you keep in the heart end diastolic volume the more the blood you keep in the heart heart contracts more powerfully increases the contractility you increase the end diastolic volume contractility also increases eh sir frank starling la ask in fmg questions frank starling la okay so instead of the word end diastolic volume they can also use the word preload preload increase hone to contractility bhi badh jayega stroke volume bhi badh jayega now reflexes sir cardiac reflexes fmg question recent fmg question recent fmg exam mein reflexes cushing reflex kya hai if you have intracranial pressure okay if you have intracranial pressure increase in the intracranial pressure okay sir intracranial pressure head mein ek tumor hai or some trauma hai intracranial pressure increase hone to immediately heart rate kam ho jayega because that vagus nerve is activated so increase in the intracranial pressure decreases the heart rate this is called as the cushing's reflex okay bain bridge reflex hai kya hai ek bain bridge reflex kya hai sir if you increase the blood volume are by normal saline normal saline now you increase the blood volume okay blood volume increase hua so what happened to the venous return zyada venous blood sir venous return bhi zyada hua more venous return more blood is going to the heart where it's going sir atria ko zyada blood is going now if you increase the venous return atrial stretch the atria stretch ho jayega okay atria stretches this gives signal this atrial stretch gives signal to the brain which means more blood are simply think when you have more blood heart have to contract more or less number of times heart have to contract more number of times or less number of times it have to contract more number of times right so can't heart rate increase ho jayega so blood zyada hai to automatically heart rate bhi zyada hota badh jata okay so this is a tachycardiac reflex okay tachycardiac reflex means vein bridge reflex increases the heart rate cushing reflex is a bradycardiac okay sir when you are on a bridge okay students from china you have been to the high bridges right very very high bridge even in india like you know there are if you go to a very high bridge okay bridge may when you see down from the bridge when you see down you will have scare like you know you will fear right you will be scared so tachycardia so remember it like that so bridge increases your heart rate so when you go on to a bridge heart rate increases so remember remember it like that okay brain bridge reflex may at the end heart rate bad jata okay so basal jarrett reflex hey kya hai basal jarrett reflex when you keep certain chemicals serotonin veratidin and capsaicin okay so capsaicin veratidin and serotonin if you put this chemicals into the heart okay if you keep this chemicals into the heart heart rate kam ho jata heart rate comes down bp comes down later on there will be apnea 
okay there will be apnea and coronary vasodilation will be there these are the reflexes they happen sir scientists they don't have any work physiologists they don't have any work what they will be taking is are right, let's do some experiments serotonin le lo heart mein inject karo dekho heart rate increase hua decrease hua ah sir heart rate decrease hua bp decrease hua coronary blood vessels dilate ho gaya ah likho a basal jaris reflex hai if you keep some chemicals in the heart heart rate decreases bp decreases apnea will be there respiratory rate decreases and coronary vasodilation this is basal jaris reflex and this is also bradycardiac reflex bradycardia means heart rate decreases bradycardia okay bradycardiac reflex done ho gaya next last reflex baroreceptor reflex baroreceptor reflex a kya hai baroreceptor reflex what you should know for your exam sir your brain is a funny thing sir it, it want to know each and everything your brain is like your girlfriend your girlfriend always want to know like you know where are you what are you doing okay to whom are like you know you are with whom your brain also wants to know everything your bp that's mean arterial pressure your bp sir the average bp okay the average bp just one minute sir i just want to lock the door because children are there they are running here and there okay otherwise in the middle they will suddenly they show up and they will like you know <clears throat> let me uh, miss the things so are in your body may the average bp is called as a mean arterial bp your brain wants to know what is the average bp happening in the body what is the average bp so look sir how it will know in your blood vessels like in arch of aorta there are aortic baroreceptors see in the arch of aorta may there are aortic baroreceptors okay and in the carotid sinus may look in the carotid sinus may there are carotid baroreceptors okay sir in the area called as carotid sinus this area is called carotid sinus there are carotid baroreceptors aortic baroreceptors what they will check what they will measure they will measure the mean arterial pressure and this information look this information is going to your brain okay this information is going to your brain via which nerve via which nerve via the ninth cranial nerve and the 10th cranial nerve this is what i want you to know that's it if you know this enough sir baroreceptors kidhar hai carotid sinus aortic arch what are the afferents what are the afferents going to the central nervous system this information is taken to the central nervous system via 9th and 10th cranial nerve where this information is going information about the bp where this information is going information is going to the medulla 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 may which nucleus nucleus of tractus solitarius nucleus of tractus solitarius so nucleus of tractus solitarius is receiving this information about the mean arterial pressure from carotid baroreceptors and aortic baroreceptors and they want to know what is the bp bp and they will it will control the bp later on it will manage the bp if it is more it will bring down if it is less it will bring up it will maintain the bp sir. so baroreceptors i want you to know baroreceptor reflex ninth and 10th cranial nerves via the ninth and 10th cranial nerve that is glossopharyngeal and vagus by the 9th and 10th cranial nerve 9th cranial nerve branch herring's nerve and 10th cranial nerve branch sans nerve so by the 9th and 10th cranial nerve your central nervous system knows bp okay done okay sir so last thing in the cardiovascular system the last thing in the cardiovascular system okay sir poisley hagen's formula poisley hagen's formula hey poisley hagen's formula kya hai sir so blood flow is dependent on which parameters blood flow it is dependent on four parameters pressure difference across the blood vessel pressure difference means on one side there is more pressure other side there is less pressure more blood flow is going to be there so blood flow is depends on the pressure difference pressure difference blood flow is dependent on what pressure difference delta p also the blood flow is depends on the vessel radius radius of the blood vessel more radius more blood flow less radius less blood flow okay but blood flow is inversely proportional to length inversely zyada length hai to blood vessel ka length zyada less blood flow is seen 
ब्लड का विस्कासिटी द फ्लूड का विस्कासिटी प्लास्मा का विस्कासिटी ए ज्यादा है तो ब्लड फ्लो कम हो जाएगा इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल ओके सो पॉइजली हेगन फॉर्मुला इट इज टेलिंग यू ब्लड फ्लो इज अ डिपेंडेंट ऑन विच पैरामीटर्स हाउ गुड द बिरयानी हाउ गुड द टेस्ट ऑफ द बिरयानी इज अ डिपेंडेंट ऑन द कुक इज डिपेंड ऑन द कुक ओके इज डिपेंड ऑन द शेफ In the same way, blood flow depends on who? It depends on four parameters: delta P, radius, length, and viscosity. Okay. Now, blood vessel का radius double होने तो if you double the radius of the blood vessel, what happens to the blood flow? You know the formula, right? Sir, blood flow Q is directly proportional to R to the power of four. So, blood flow. What we have done with the radius? Two, two to the power of four. If you double the radius, there is sixteen times more blood flow. Okay, so if you double the radius, blood flow increases by sixteen times. Two thousand nineteen June FMG exam. Two thousand nineteen June me exam hua and this is the question asked. If you dilate the blood vessel, if you increase the radius, blood flow increases by sixteen times. If you triple the radius, radius ko triple karne to, for example, say blood flow directly proportional to three to the power of four, three into three into three into three, eighty one times. Blood flow increases by eighty-one times. Okay, so know about this Poisley-Higgins formula. Very important for your exam. Done. Sir. Done. So with this cardiovascular system also completed important points. Shall we begin the respiratory system? Shall we begin the respiratory? Come on, buddies. Come on. <clears throat> you get active and make me also active with your positive comments. Please make me active, sir. See, I'm crying because Kuti is waiting for me. Biryani is waiting for me, but I'm not eating. Okay, I'm waiting for. I'm teaching you. Hmm. So you should me motivate me to teach you more. <clears throat> so, respiratory physiology, sir. So respiratory physiology. Me first topic is mechanics of breathing. Mechanics of breathing. Okay, so normally at rest, sir, resting time me, resting time me. Look, sir, imagine this is your lung. Eh, hey, sir, apka your lung. Okay, apke lung. This is your lung. Okay, this is your lung, sir. What is the atmospheric pressure? Atmospheric pressure is zero. Atmosphere me pressure how much, sir? Zero. Atmospheric pressure. Let's take it as zero, sir. What is the pressure in the alveolus? Alveolus ka pressure be also zero, sir. Outside zero, inside zero. So do you think air will move? No. Outside same pressure है, inside भी same pressure है, so air is not moving, air is not moving, okay? Now pleura में intra pleural pressure, intra pleural pressure how much is that? Minus two point five mm Hg negative pressure है, negative pressure है, okay? So during rest में, resting time में, you are not breathing, that is you are not inspiring, you are not expiring, but inspiration के time में देखो. Inspiration. So inspiration के time में वो क्या हुआ? Diaphragm your diaphragm contracted, phrenic nerve activated, diaphragm contracted because of the contraction of diaphragm. Intrapleural pressure looks. Intrapleural pressure becomes more negative. How much? Minus six mm Hg. More negative means more vacuum. That negative pressure is going to stretch the alveolus. Alveolus stretch हुआ. उटसाइड जीरो है Inside minus one है, so automatically air will move from high pressure to low pressure. Inspiration हो गया, okay? Inspiration हो गया sir, हुआ. So high pressure to low pressure. So just tell me, so inspiration के time में, during inspiration, what happened to the intra alveolar pressure? Intra alveolar pressure becomes minus one. Intra pleural pressure becomes minus six. Okay, हो गया. Expiration के time में. 
सर एक्सप्रेशन के टाइम में क्या होता सर अगेन इंट्रा प्लोरल प्रेशर फ्रॉम माइनस सिक्स बिकम्स माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव नाउ एक्सपीरेशन के टाइम में आलवियोलस कोलैप्स आलवियोलस इज कोलैप्सिंग सी आलवियोलस कोलैप्सिंग सो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग व्हेन वॉल्यूम डिक्रीजेस व्हाट हैपन टू द प्रेशर प्रेशर इंक्रीजेस बॉइल्स ला बॉइल्स ला व्हेन वॉल्यूम डिक्रीजेस इनसाइड प्रेशर इंक्रीजेस सो हियर प्लस वन इज जनरेटेड आउटसाइड इज जीरो यू कैन चेंज आउटसाइड सो ऑटोमेटिकली बाहर चला जाएगा ओके बाहर चला जाएगा सर ओके सो एक्सप्रेशन कंप्लीट सो टेल मी ड्यूरिंग एक्सप्रेशन के टाइम में व्हाट हैपन टू द इंट्रा अल्वियोलर प्रेशर प्लस वन व्हाट हैपन टू द इंट्रा प्लोरल प्रेशर माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव बैक बैक टू माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव हो गया डन ना सर सरफेक्टेंट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर एफ एग्जाम सरफेक्टेंट ये सरफेक्टेंट क्या है सर सर सरफेक्टेंट it is present in your alveolus imagine this is your alveolus sir surfactant it is present in your alveolus okay ye kya hai sir surfactant kya hai it is a lipoprotein it's a 90% lipid 10% protein lipoprotein okay so what are the lipids what are the lipids so the major lipid is called as lecithin okay lecithin lecithin is the major lipid then what is the minor lipid 90 परसेंट में एक मेजर लिपिड है लिसिथिन एंड माइनर लिपिड है स्विंगोमाइलिन ओके नाउ इफ सरफेक्टेंट है तो लिसिथिन स्विंगोमाइलिन रेशियो ग्रेटर देन 2 इफ यू हैव एनफ अमाउंट ऑफ सरफेक्टेंट इन योर लंग्स देन वी से अरे फीटल लंग्स आर मैच्योर्ड फीटल लंग्स मैच्योर हुआ फीटस का लंग्स डेवलप हो गया सो व्हाट इज द इंडिकेशन ऑफ फीटल लंग मैच्योरिटी लिसिथिन स्विंगोमाइलिन रेशियो major lipid and minor lipid ka ratio if it is greater than 2 we say fetal lungs are matured who produces this let's say like you no know, like the surfactant sir who produces it sir it is produced by type 2 pneumocytes alveolus me alveolus me two types of cells are there one is type 1 alveolar cells type 2 alveolar cells sir you can say type 1 pneumocytes type 2 pneumocytes this type 2 pneumocytes they produces this surfactant it produces the surfactant surfactant ka kaam kya hai surfactant is it good or bad sir surfactant is very good it's the protector it's a protector it's like army sir okay surfactant it decreases surface tension okay so surface tension lungs mein ek dangerous force hai sir okay lungs mein ek enemy hai So lungs may surface tension hai. This surface tension ko kam kam karta sir. This surfactant is going to decrease the surface tension. Okay. Now okay, its surface surfactant is produced by type two pneumocytes. Okay. When when it is produced, sir, surfactant is produced by almost twenty weeks of period of gestation. Twenty to twenty four weeks of period of gestation. Surfactant is produced in the fetal lungs. Are started. Okay, production started. Not enough amount. Not enough amount. Surfactant production started by. 20 to 24 weeks when you can see the surfactant in the amniotic fluid so it's going to appear appear in amniotic fluid by 28 to 32 weeks of period of gestation by 28 to 32 weeks of period of gestation surfactant is appearing in the amniotic fluid the surfactant is good surfactant is good sir good as surfactant nahi hai to lungs are collapsed surfactant nahi hai to lungs will be at problem sir what is that problem that problem is called as hyaline membrane disease deficiency of what deficiency of surf factant deficiency of surfactant nahi hai to hyaline membrane disease also called as neonatal respiratory distress syndrome rds okay neonatal respiratory distress syndrome okay done now iske baad let's talk about the concepts of compliance and elastins compliance ke bare mein and elastins ke bare mein डिस्कस करेंगे ओके सर कंप्लेंट्स क्या है कंप्लेंट्स मींस स्ट्रेचेबिलिटी अरे लुक आई डोंट हैव हियर कंप्लेंट्स का मीनिंग क्या है लुक इमेजिन दिस इज अ ओके रबर बैंड ओके इज देयर इज एनीथिंग हियर टू एक्सप्लेन यू ओके इमेजिन सर ए है रबर बैंड सर रबर बैंड फॉर एग्जांपल इफ इट इज स्ट्रेचिंग आई एम स्ट्रेचिंग इट आई एम स्ट्रेचिंग इट दैट स्ट्रेचेबल नेचर इज कॉल्ड एज कंप्लेंट्स कंप्लेंट्स मींस स्ट्रेचेबिलिटी और डिस्टेंशन capacity 
okay distension capacity how much pressure i am giving and how much volume is changing okay that is compliance formula is delta v by delta p how much volume is changed see volume change for given pressure for a given pressure see imagine this wire this wire sir this wire i am giving so much pressure he is not stretching so this is less compliant a compliant nahi hai nahi hai i am giving zyada pressure but volume is not changing so less compliant hai but imagine a rubber band rubber band sir it is stretching more so more compliant and a kya hai sir elasticity are look rubber band when i stretch it yes it is compliant but when i leave when i leave it is going to recoil back going back to its original position it maintains the shape it maintains the original shape that is called as elasticens that is called as elasticens recoil property maintaining original shape maintaining the original shape sir so according to the physiology according to the science this apple pencil is highly elastic see i am trying to stretch it it's not stretching it is maintaining its shape so this is highly highly elastic sir stretching is not elastic stretching is compliance maintaining going back to its original shape resisting the deformation of its shape is called as elasticens okay so we can say compliance and elasticens are opposite to each other okay so look sir surface tension in your lungs mein kya hai surface tension is there okay why it is there i can't explain you now sir because we, it it takes a lot of time in your lungs mein kya hai hai surface tension is there surface tension is bad it is collapsing the lungs it's collapsing the lungs it's a collapse you it's a it's a collapsing force surface tension is a collapsing force but what is compliance compliance is stretching surface tension is collapsing so yes fmg mcq collapse compliance and surface tension are opposite to each other if i say if i say if i increase the surface tension in the lungs compliance kam ho jayega surface tension ko increase kare to it's a collapsing force so now the lungs are not stretchable it is hard to stretch the lungs the lung compliance kam ho jayega okay so different different conditions mein dekho inspiration ke condition mein what happened to the compliance 90% of the students will think ah inspiration ke time mein lungs are expanding lungs are stretching so compliance increases no no sir no inspiration ke time mein compliance decreases there is a reason i am not going into the detail but just trust me inspiration ke time mein yes of course lung is stretching but it is very hard to stretch the lung you have to give more pressure to stretch the lung okay so inspiration ke time mein compliance less expiration ke time mein compliance more expiration ke time mein compliance is more this is little confusing but trust me if you fill the lung with water saline filled lungs if you fill the lung with saline okay if you fill the lung with saline compliance increases the lungs will become more compliant okay just by heart then saline filled lungs may compliance increases emphysema condition may compliance increases okay pulmonary fibrosis condition may emphysema obstructive lung disease compliance is more pulmonary fibrosis restrictive lung disease compliance is less okay sir so done compliance changes with the different different conditions okay done sir a hai lung so lung let's divide into three lobes apex middle lobes base now look at the image and tell me sir where do you think is more blood flow more perfusion more blood flow is where where do you think is more blood flow sir here base may so perfusion that is the blood flow is zyada blood hai perfusion is more in base less in apex okay so less blood in the apex more blood in the base okay done a dekho sir again lung lung ke apex me dekho lung ke apex me ventilation only concentration on the ventilation sir ventilation is less less ventilation hai okay less ventilation hai but look at the ventilation in the base base of the lung 
more ventilation here. So I can say one thing in the apex, less ventilation. And in the base, more ventilation. Ventilation means more air is going, sir. More air. So in the base, perfusion is more as well as ventilation is more. Okay. So both ventilation and perfusion are maximum in base. Are in your base of the lung, more air will go and more blood will go. More air and more blood will go to the base of your lung. Apex may, dekho, apex may ventilation be come hai, perfusion be come hai. Okay. Less air will go, less blood will go. Okay. Done so. So these are the points which I want you to know. Apex may perfusion be come hai and ventilation be come hai. Base may ventilation zyada hai, perfusion be zyada hai. Okay. More blood will go? No thing. Sir, how much is your ventilation? Ventilation kitna hai, sir? Ventilation. How much air you will keep into your lung? Tell me. How much air you will keep into your lung? Every minute. Every minute. Her minute. How much air you will keep into your alveolus? 4 liters, sir. That's the value. Fixed value. 4 liters of air you will keep into your lungs. Okay, ventilation. Perfusion kitna hai? How much blood you will send to your lungs? Every minute. 5 liters. Okay, 5 liters. So, you are sending 4 liters of air into your lungs. And 5 liters of blood. So what is the ventilation perfusion ratio? 0 0.8. So ventilation to perfusion ratio, V by Q ratio is 0 0.8. But apex may toda different hai. You know, sir, ventilation bhi kam hai, perfusion bhi kam hai. Isi liye ventilation perfusion ratio, V by Q ratio in the apex, it is not 0 0.8. A toda different, sir. It is 3.2. And base may, base may, ventilation perfusion ratio, you know, base may, ventilation zyada hai, perfusion bhi zyada hai. So, ventilation perfusion ratio in the base is 0 0.6. Uh -huh. So, you, you should know, you should know these three things. Ventilation perfusion ratio in normal person 0 0.8, apex may 3.2, base may 0 0.6. Okay, sir, pathology, now pathology condition may. Ventilation perfusion ratio, if there is pulmonary embolism, Ventilation, perfusion, pulmonary embolism, may pulmonary arteries are blocked. Pulmonary arteries blocked. So, ventilation normal hai for perfusion zero ho gaya. The blood vessel got blocked. So, four divided by zero, infinity. Four divided by zero, infinity. Okay. And conditions like foreign body obstruction may, like you take a one rupee coin and like, you know, the child swallowed that one rupee coin. Obstruction, foreign body obstruction. So, ventilation is affected now. Ventilation. So, V by Q may ventilation zero hua, perfusion normal hai. Perfusion normal hai. So, foreign body obstruction ke samay mein and airway compression, airway. The airway got compressed. The airway that got compressed. Okay. Airway compression may. So, what happens? Zero divided by five. How much? Zero divided by five. Zero. Okay. So, now tell me. Ventilation perfusion ratio normal 0 0.8. Apex may 3.2. Okay, apex may how much is that? 3.2. Base may 0 0.6. And pulmonary embolism may infinity. And foreign body obstruction get time may 0. Done. This topic is also completed. Okay, this topic is also completed. Now, next, sir, oxygen hemoglobin association dissociation curve. Okay, sir, oxygen and hemoglobin relationship. Oxygen hemoglobin relationship. Now, here, look. Very simple, sir. Very simple. In your exam, what they will ask you? A blue color ka line hai na, a normal hai. Okay, this is normal ka. Oxygen, like so, oxygen and hemoglobin ka relationship kaisa hai. Okay? First, you, what you should know is a blue color curve is a normal ka. In certain conditions mein, body mein certain conditions hai to. Body may certain conditions say to a curve right co shift ho jayega. and in certain conditions may a left co shift ho jayega. sometimes left shift happens sometimes right shift happens right shift is happening in which conditions right shift counts are conditions may ho jata, sir. right shift exercising conditions may you can see 
अरे यू आर रनिंग यू आर रनिंग ओके यू आर डूइंग मोर एक्सरसाइज एक्सरसाइज करे तो आपका बॉडी में कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड लेवल्स बढ़ जाता ऑक्सीजन लेवल्स कम हो जाता एक्सरसाइज करे तो लैक्टिक एसिडोसिस हो जाता एसिडोसिस के एक टाइम में पीएच कम हो जाता ओके पीएच इज गोइंग डाउन एंड एच प्लस ओके एच प्लस प्रोटॉन्स आर इंक्रीजिंग एक्सरसाइज के टाइम में टेम्परेचर बढ़ जाता इन योर बॉडी में एंड प्रेजेंस इन योर आरबीसी में बायोकेमिस्ट्री सर इन योर आरबीसी में टू थ्री बिस्फॉसोट लेवल इंक्रीज हो जाता नाउ लुक सर एक्सरसाइजिंग कंडीशन में इन योर बॉडी दीज कंडीशन आर फेयर these conditions do you know what they will do they causes right shift okay what they have did they causes right shift sir okay they causes right shift so now tell me right shift is seen in exercising conditions like hypercarbia hypoxia acidosis low ph increase h plus increase temperature okay in all these conditions you will see right shift come on guys active okay it will be like you know continuously we are hearing hearing for the last 3 hours okay just active yourself energize active active okay just stretch your back take water as much as possible okay so right shift is seen in these conditions are do you know what is right shift think logically sir exercising conditions may more oxygen should go to the tissues hemoglobin should release more oxygen hemoglobin shouldn't keep hemoglobin it have to leave the oxygen so hemoglobin affinity for oxygen will be less hemoglobin love for oxygen will be less hemoglobin say you oxygen please go to the tissues you oxygen please go to the tissues so more oxygen will be delivered during exercising conditions and left shift is going to be seen in kaunsa conditions you are not you are resting sir you are resting you are not doing any work रेस्टिंग के टाइम में ओके रेस्टिंग के टाइम में आपका बॉडी का टेम्परेचर डिक्रीजेस आल्कोसिस कंडीशन में एंड यूर हेच प्लस आयर्स आर डिक्रीजिंग रेस्टिंग के टाइम में एंड यूर ब्लड लेवल्स ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड आर डिक्रीजिंग सो इसी कंडीशन में इन दिस कंडीशन में ओके सो दिस कर्व इज गोइंग टू शिफ्ट टूवर्ड्स द लेफ्ट लेफ्ट शिफ्ट ओके सो यू नो इट सर Curve, oxygen hemoglobin curve, when it shift to the right and when it shift to the left. In certain conditions, where there will be right shift, in certain conditions where there is left shift. If you know this, that's an absurd. Okay, now there is not time to in detail explanations. Are in certain conditions where right, certain conditions where certain conditions where left. That's it. Done. हो गया. Transport of gases. Okay, transport of gases. How many gases do we have? Oxygen, carbon dioxide. Oxygen, carbon dioxide. So ninety-seven percent of the oxygen, it travels along with hemoglobin. It binds with the hemoglobin. Okay, that is called as the oxyhemoglobin. Where it is going to the tissues. Okay, oxygen is going to bind with hemoglobin and goes to the tissues. But three percent of the oxygen is dissolved. Three percent of the oxygen is dissolved where in plasma mein. and goes to the tissues. Dissolve होने के बाद it goes to the tissues. Okay. But carbon dioxide from the tissues, carbon dioxide produced from the tissues, sir, during electron transport chain in the cells, carbon dioxide is produced. So carbon dioxide, it is a transported in the form of one bar carbon dioxide produced. होने तो carbon dioxide changes its form. Carbon dioxide converts into bicarbonates and comes to the lungs. It's transported to the lungs in the form of bicarbonates. So carbon dioxide, what is the major form of transport? Carbon dioxide. Majorly transported in the form of bicarbonates, where in plasma, mein. in plasma, mein. then how yes, how yes, and we are coming to the last topics, sir. Types of hypoxia. Every time one question will come. Types of hypoxia, sir. Hypoxia का meaning क्या है? Oxygen कम है. Okay, oxygen कम है. There is less oxygen going to the tissues. What are the reasons? There are four types of hypoxia, sir. Hypoxic hypoxia, anemic hypoxia, stagnant hypoxia, and histotoxic hypoxia. Simple. Arey, let me tell, let me show you here itself. Hypoxic hypoxia means. Now, I went to right. I am in like you know this country. You know, I am in the uh, foreign sir, Central Asian countries, sir. Here, I went to the mountains. 
the cold like you know the right now there is snowing i went to the snow mountains at top high altitudes are high altitudes ko jaane to if you went to the high altitudes what happens to your partial pressure decreases partial pressure of oxygen decreases are bahar oxygen nahi hai isiliye you are not getting the oxygen isiliye you are not getting the oxygen so the partial pressure of oxygen decreases okay so hypoxic hypoxia is seen in high altitudes okay high altitudes so high altitudes may partial pressure of oxygen is less isiliye you are getting hypoxic you are not getting oxygen anemic hypoxia sir anemic hypoxia means ये क्या है एनीमिक हाइपोक्सिया है सी देर इज सम प्रॉब्लम इन द ब्लड ब्लड में प्रॉब्लम है सर बाहर सब कुछ नॉर्मल है बाहर एवरीथिंग इज नॉर्मल प्रॉब्लम वेयर यू आर हैविंग लेस हीमोग्लोबिन हीमोग्लोबिन कम है हीमोग्लोबिन इज नॉट देयर सो इट्स नॉट कैरिंग इट्स नॉट कैचिंग एनफ अमाउंट ऑफ ऑक्सीजन और और हीमोग्लोबिन इज बाइंडिंग विद सम अदर गैस लाइक कार्बन कार्बन लाइक मोनोक्साइड कार्बन मोनोक्साइड पॉइजनिंग ओके कार्बन मोनोक्साइड पॉइजनिंग सर सर इन कार्बन मोनोक्साइड पॉइजनिंग में hemoglobin bind with carbon monoxide so there is no place for oxygen problem kidhar hai hemoglobin pe problem hai isliye you are not getting oxygen problem hemoglobin se stagnant hypoxia sir bahar oxygen hai hemoglobin is also normal but heart is not working properly heart ka problem sir it's not properly beating so blood is not going to the tissues oxygen is not going to the tissues isliye so cardiogenic shock okay cardiogenic shock may stagnant hypoxia is seen everything is normal partial pressure of oxygen is normal hemoglobin is normal everything is normal okay stagnant hypoxia is seen in cardiogenic shock and histotoxic hypoxia sir idhar problem kya hai sir in the histose means problem in the tissues tissues mein problem hai what is the problem sir cyanide poisoning you have taken the cyanide cyanide le mein to what happens सर टिश्यूज में सेल्स में इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन में कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर फोर इनहिबिट हो जाएगा इनहिबिटेड कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर फोर इज नॉट वर्किंग व्हेन कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर फोर इज नॉट वर्किंग इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू टेक द ऑक्सीजन इट हैव टू कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर फोर हैव टू टेक द ऑक्सीजन एंड इट हैव टू प्रोड्यूस द वॉटर बाय एक्सेप्टिंग द ऑक्सीजन एंड एक्सेप्टिंग द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स द लास्ट प्रोसेस वॉटर शुड बी प्रोड्यूस्ड नाउ प्रॉब्लम किधर है टिश्यू में now tissue cannot utilize the oxygen because of the cyanide poisoning aha uh-huh, okay cyanide poisoning mein histotoxic problem in the tissues tissue histotoxic hypoxia ho jayega okay so complete itself the four types of hypoxia hypoxic hypoxia high altitudes anemic hypoxia carbon monoxide poisoning stagnant hypoxia cardiogenic shock and histotoxic hypoxia it is seen in cyanide poisoning cyanide poisoning sir okay done and the last topic is chemo receptors chemo receptors okay the last topic which i want you to know is chemo receptors look sir chemo receptors look ek kya hai chemo receptors now your body may there are some agents okay what these agents are doing agent agent they are looking oxygen is normal or not normal amount of oxygen is there or not oxygen partial pressure partial pressure of oxygen is normal or not normal or not carbon dioxide partial pressure the levels of carbon dioxide normal or not normal or not who is checking chemo receptors so chemo receptors they check oxygen levels and carbon dioxide levels they check the carbon dioxide levels oxygen levels so there are receptors uh, called as a peripheral chemo receptors peripheral chemo receptors where they are present they are present in aortic arch and carotid sinus they present in the aortic arch and carotid sinus what they check fmg mcq fmg mcq sir peripheral chemo receptors they check how much is the oxygen blood may and a oxygen is there or not and central chemo receptors where they are present they are present in the brain they are present in the brain what they check they mainly check the carbon dioxide levels normal or not normal or not okay so peripheral chemo receptors check oxygen levels central chemo receptors check carbon dioxide levels and proton levels they are sensitive to carbon dioxide and protons this is the question which was asked okay now hone ke baad sir aap agar 
high altitudes ko jane to okay you have all been to the snowy mountains right you have all been to that snow mountains okay now when you go to the snow mountains what are the changes that are seen in the body this is the question ras again again ask your senior sir 6 months back this is the question asked in the fmg exam 6 months back this is the question asked sir when you go to the mountains what happened to the partial pressure of oxygen sir partial pressure kam ho jayega okay now oxygen is less now the partial pressure of oxygen in your body decreases when you are having less oxygen now what you have to do you have to do more work you have to take more oxygen sir oxygen level in your body is going down so immediately now you will have deep inspiration your tidal volume increases you will try to do deep inspiration and you will try to do more respiration more number of times respiratory rate rr per respiratory rate means you will breathe more number of times respiratory rate increase ho jayega and tidal volume baby means you will take more air so tidal volume increases they will ask you in high altitude tidal volume increases respiratory rate increases so what happened to your ventilation isi wajah se because of these two reasons ventilation in high altitude your ventilation increases you will breathe like this <sighs> means more ventilation okay more ventilation more ventilation so in high altitude may your blood to the lungs your perfusion to the lungs also increases to catch more oxygen to catch more oxygen perfusion bhi badh jayega okay perfusion to the lungs bhi badh jayega so tell me this is the question high altitude may वेंटिलेशन बढ़ जाएगा और परफ्यूजन भी बढ़ जाएगा टू कैच दिस ऑक्सीजन परफ्यूजन भी बढ़ जाएगा टोटल भी हाई आल्टीट्यूड में वेंटिलेशन इज मोर एज वेल एज परफ्यूजन इज ऑल्सो मोर परफ्यूजन इज ऑल्सो मोर ओके नेक्स्ट सर वेन यू आर लिविंग इन हाई आल्टीट्यूड फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम ओके वेन यू आर लिविंग इन दाई आल्टीट्यूड फॉर फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम सो इथ्रोपाइटिन योर किडनीज ओके किडनीज the peritubular capillaries of the kidneys produce erythropoietin erythropoietin stimulates colony forming unit erythroid colony forming units in the bone marrow bone marrow may erythroid colony forming units important question okay erythropoietin is going to stimulate the erythroid colony forming units so that increases the rbc rbc ko increase ho jayega when you are living in high altitudes hypoxia inducing factor hypoxia inducing factor increases in your body okay sir hypoxia inducing factor levels increases what it will do it increases the level of vascular endothelial growth factor okay more blood flow to the lungs vascular endothelial growth factor increases angiogenesis means more capillaries to the lungs okay sir vascular endothelial growth factor it causes angiogenesis to the lungs means more blood is going to the lungs to catch more oxygen to catch more oxygen okay so again sir high altitude mein okay high altitudes mein tell me you will be doing hyperventilation okay hyper ventilation hyperventilation <laughs> something like that hyperventilation aap hyperventilate kare to your ph changes sir in your body ph change ho jayega how it will change respiratory alkalosis so high altitude condition may when you are in the high altitudes what kind of ph change will be there in your body respiratory alkalosis will be the seen hyperventilation hyperventilation causes respiratory alkalosis done done so and sir um, just for safe side i am telling you if a patient is having meningitis pathology the patient is having meningitis he will be having which pattern of respiration see he will be having okay hyperapnea he will be having deep inspiration deep expiration followed by okay my god charging is completing okay followed by a period of apnea no breathing again hyperapnea okay so this type of breathing is called as biot's breathing okay so a period of hyperapnea followed by apnea hyperapnea apnea hyperapnea apnea this is seen in the patients who are having spinal meningitis sir spinal meningitis if a patient is suffering with spinal meningitis he will be having biot type of breathing sir kusumal's breathing kusumal's breathing is 
हाइपर वेंटिलेशन हाइपर वेंटिलेशन डीप इंस्पिरेशन डीप एक्सप्रेशन सो सीन इन विच कंडीशन एटलीस्ट वन थिंग सर एसिडोसिस आर डायबेटिक कीटो एसिडोसिस एटलीस्ट दिस थिंग आपको डायबेटिक कीटो एसिडोसिस होने तो इन द बॉडी दैट पेशेंट इज हैविंग डायबेटिक कीटो एसिडोसिस आर इन कंडीशंस लाइक सेप्सिस किडनी फेलियर ओके किडनी फेलियर सेप्सिस इसी कंडीशंस में कुसुमाल्स ब्रीथिंग हाइपर वेंटिलेशन डीप इंस्पिरेशन डीप एक्सप्रेशन ओके बायोटिस हाइपर एपनिया फॉलोड बाय एपनिया हाइपर एपनिया फॉलोड बाय एपनिया कुसुमाल्स इज डीप इंस्पिरेशन डीप एक्सप्रेशन डीप इंस्पिरेशन डीप एक्सप्रेशन दैट इज कुसुमाल्स ब्रीथिंग आर यू कैन से hyper ventilation okay next chain strokes next what is the thing chain strokes sir chain strokes means okay sir gradual hyperapnea okay it's like increasing or decreasing and apnea gradual hyperapnea followed by hypoapnea hyperapnea followed by hypoapnea and apnea Hyperapnea followed by hypoapnea and apnea. So this is called as chain strokes. See hyperapnea, hypoapnea followed by apnea. Okay, my God. Hyperapnea, hypoapnea, apnea. Hyperapnea, hypoapnea, apnea. Something like this. So chain strokes is seen in brain tumors. Okay. So chain strokes is seen in brain tumors, sir. I want you to know. See, this is all like you no know, pathology. Brain tumors, chain strokes. Diabetic ketoacidosis, small breathing. Meningitis condition may biotic breathing. So done, sir. With this completed, and the last system that I will be discussing today is renal, sir. Okay, the last system that I will be discussing is the renal. Okay, so last system, renal physiology. Hello, guys. Shall we continue? Shall we complete the, uh, continue the renal in the next fifteen minutes? Shall we continue the renal in the next fifteen minutes, sir? Complete the renal, sir. Okay. So renal baby, this time FMG exam, last FMG exam, me two questions are asked. Renal me, every exam me. रीनल में वन क्वेश्चन दे आर आस्किंग यू डू नो व्हाट इज़ द क्वेश्चन सिस्टो मेट्रोग्राम सिस्टो मेट्रोग्राम द क्वेश्चन दैट विल कम इन योर एग्जाम रीनल में ओके सो फिफ्टीन मिनट्स में लेट्स कंप्लीट रीनल सर ओके सर रीनल ब्लड फ्लो हाउ मच रीनल ब्लड फ्लो हाउ मच सर वन टू वन पॉइंट टू लीटर्स रीनल ब्लड फ्लो इज वन टू वन पॉइंट टू लीटर्स ओके एवरी मिनट हाउ मच ब्लड इज गोइंग टू बोथ द किडनीज वन टू वन पॉइंट टू लीटर्स सर हाउ मच प्लास्मा फ्लो रीनल प्लास्मा फ्लो कितना है अरे ब्लड इज 1 टू 1.2 लीटर्स ओके इस ब्लड में प्लास्मा कितना है हाउ मच इज द रीनल प्लास्मा फ्लो 625 एमएल पर मिनट ओके 625 एमएल ऑफ प्लास्मा इज गोइंग अरे इस प्लास्मा में इस 625 एमएल प्लास्मा में हाउ मच इज फिल्टर्ड इनटू द नेफ्रॉन्स ओनली ओनली प्लास्मा इज फिल्टर्ड नो हाउ मच इज फिल्टर्ड इनटू द नेफ्रॉन्स दैट इज ग्लोमेरुलर फिल्ट्रेशन हाउ मच 125 एमएल पर मिनट इज फिल्टर्ड Okay, glomerular filtration rate GFR is 125 ml per minute. In your exam, what they will ask you? Formula to calculate the GFR. The formula to calculate the GFR is U V by P. U V by P. Okay, urinary concentration of a substance. They will give you what is urinary concentration of a substance. V for volume of urine. Okay, P for plasma concentration of some substance. X they will give you what is that substance and they will give you U for urine concentration of substance X. Okay, so U V by P is a part of GFR. Sir, GFR is estimated by. Are I am telling the substance no some substance some substance which substance is injected into the blood to calculate the GFR. The substances which are injected are creatinine. So creatinine and inulin are the substances which are used to estimate the GFR. प्लास्मा को एस्टिमेट करने के लिए वी यूज पैरामाइनोहिप्यूरिक एसिड सो पैरामाइनोहिप्यूरिक एसिड इज यूज टू एस्टिमेट प्लास्मा फ्लो प्लास्मा फ्लो इज एस्टिमेटेड बाय पैरा अमेनो लेट मी राइट पैरा अमेनो हिप्यूरिक एसिड पैरा अमेनोहिप्यूरिक एसिड इज यूज टू एस्टिमेट हाउ मच इज द रीनल प्लास्मा फ्लो 625 एमएल 725 एमएल 825 एमएल How we will calculate by injecting which substance? Paraminoic uric acid. Okay. इसके बाद, इसके बाद, sir, glomerular filtration barrier. अरे वो sir, see, ये है glomerular capillary. You know, afferent arterial glomerular capillary. You know it, right? ये है sir, glomerular capillary. Now here is the plasma. Okay. 
here is the bowman's capsule here is the bowman's capsule the plasma have to filter like this the plasma have to come down filter like this okay so how many structures it should cross how many structures it should cross sir dekho first glomerular capillary me this is the glomerular capillary isme what are these cells these are endothelial cells these are endothelial cells okay so first the plasma have to cross this endothelial cells they have to cross the endothelial cells okay next the plasma have to cross this green color thing okay that this green color thing is there right so it have to cross this green color thing e kya hai sir what is this this is glomerular basement membrane gbm okay that's called as a glomerular basement membrane okay now last layer the third gate is the cells the cells are called as podocytes okay sir so first endothelial cells hai so this glomerular filtration barrier mein three structures three structures hai sir three structures hai what are the three structures endothelial layer glomerular basement membrane and podocytes sir glomerular basement membrane ko kya charge hai negative charge hai so glomerular basement membrane is having which charge negative charge because glomerular basement membrane is having negative charge sir done so now they go nephron i'm talking about the nephron now okay nephron me sir nephron me this is bowman's capsule okay this is the first part bowman's capsule ho gaya next proximal convoluted tubule so look proximal convoluted tubule me maximum water is reabsorbed sir how much percent maximum water reabsorbed 70% of the water is reabsorbed 70% of the sodium chloride is reabsorbed and 100% of the glucose is reabsorbed 100% of amino acids are reabsorbed kidar pct pct mein so pct is highly metabolically active okay highly metabolically active is pct okay highly metabolically active ho gaya done okay next what is this part sir this is the descending limb of loop of henle hai na that is a descending limb descending limb sir is a descending limb of loop of henle me only who is getting reabsorbed sir water only water is getting reabsorbed okay almost 15 to 20% of the water will be reabsorbed sir either 70% pct me 70% in the descending limb of loop of henle me 15 to 20% of the water is reabsorbed who is only water is reabsorbed from the urine you are reabsorbing the water sir as you are reabsorbing the water urine will become concentrated urine will become concentrated so this descending limb is concentrating segment of nephron concentrating segment of the nephron okay ho gaya done now a kya hai sir sir this is ascending limb of loop of henle right a ascending limb hai so ascending limb mein look who is getting reabsorbed sodium potassium two chloride ions so they are solutes solutes are reabsorbed aha okay so ascending limb may only solutes are reabsorbed with the help of a transporter with the help of a transporter called as sodium potassium two chloride symporter okay so right so sodium potassium two chloride symporter our co transporter is present in ascending limb of loop of henle me okay ek aur point hai look sir isse who is getting reabsorbed only solutes are getting reabsorbed means you are removing the solutes you are removing the solutes so what happen to the urine urine dilute ho jayega okay the urine is getting diluted because you are removing the salts sir you are removing the solutes so urine is getting dilute so that is a diluting segment okay tk sir a kya hai this is the distal convoluted tubule okay distal convoluted tubule now distal convoluted tubule may a important point sir there is a transporter look sir there is a transporter which reabsorbs sodium as well as chlorine so what is the name of this transporter sodium chloride sim porter sodium chloride symporter that sodium chloride symporter where it is present sodium chloride symporter it is present in the distal convoluted tubule now questions which were asked in the previous exams questions which were asked 
sir what is that drug you already know it guys from pharmacology tell me what is the drug which inhibits this sodium potassium two chloride importer what is the drug sir that sodium potassium two chloride importer is inhibited by loop diuretics okay loop diuretics next sir this sodium chloride importer is inhibited by this sodium chloride importer is inhibited by tell me sir that sodium chloride importer is inhibited by thiazide diuretics you know it done sir okay next sir a kya hai barter syndrome a kya hai what is barter syndrome sir barter syndrome mein by birth itself it's a um <clears throat> autosomal recessive disorder sir okay autosomal recessive disorder a barter syndrome mein by birth itself the sodium potassium two chloride importer that is present in the ascending limb of loop of henle is a defective a defect ho gaya ek kaam nahi kar rahe okay and gitelman syndrome mein gitelman syndrome mein sir it's a dct defect distal convoluted tubule mein sodium chloride importer is defect by birth if by birth if this transporter is not functioning then it causes a syndrome called as gitelman syndrome so tell me barter syndrome mein sodium potassium two chloride importer is defective and gitelman syndrome mein sodium chloride importer is defective okay defective okay ho gaya kaam ho gaya Uh, like this is done right now carefully look sir this is a collecting duct now i am talking about the collecting duct last part of the nephron last part who will act on the collecting duct sir aldosterone i said you aldosterone steroid steroid it have cytoplasmic receptor it crosses the cell membrane okay aldosterone when it acts on the cell it reabsorbs sodium see sodium is getting reabsorbed potassium is getting excreted with the help of which channels epithelial sodium channel a channel ka naam hai sir epithelial sodium channel so aldosterone helps in function of epithelial sodium channels so sodium is reabsorbed okay but whenever there is no aldosterone think whenever there is no aldosterone this channel should not function you think sir this channel should not function but sometimes we all do over action we all do over action in the same way Even though aldosterone is not there, नहीं है अभी aldosterone नहीं है, still these channels are functioning. Okay, they are they are functioning. They are reabsorbing the sodium. So this syndrome is called as the Liddell syndrome. So overactivity of epithelial sodium channels. So overactivity of epithelial sodium channels will cause Liddell syndrome, autosomal dominant. These channels are over functioning, so they increases the sodium reabsorption. that's a little syndrome okay okay now if you properly see sir medulla me here i have shown is this a medulla no this a medulla the loop of henle is going to the medulla sir medulla me look at the osmolarity 400 600 800 1000 hyperosmolarity sir medulla me why there is hyperosmolarity who created that you created it i created it who created it that's the question sir is medulla me if you if you look into the medulla there is hyperosmolarity 1200 milliosmoles kidney me medulla me so much concentration is there who created it direct question so medullary hyperosmolarity it is a created by okay medullary hyperosmolarity is created by counter current multiplier system that's it just by heart it for now medullary hyperosmolarity is created by a system called as a counter current multiplier multiplying my hyperosmolarity 300 600 800 1000 1200 multiplier system created it then who maintained it creation and later it should maintain god should create and sustain maintain the thing so this hyperosmolarity is maintained with the help of a system called as counter current exchanger okay counter current exchanger are look from the descending limb say water is reabsorbed this water is again going back into the blood vessel the water is not staying in the kidney sir the water is reabsorbed and the ascending limb says is sodium chloride are reabsorbed 
and they are going into the blood vessel they are exchanged they are exchanged see simply they are exchanged so with the help of which blood vessel sir this blood vessel is called as vasa recta this blood vessel is called as vasa recta exchanged the substances are getting exchanged so water is not staying here if water stays there that water will wash away it will wash away the medullary osmolarity that's bad that's bad so the counter current exchanger system why it is called as counter current exchanger only one point i will tell you look counter current means here the urine is moving in opposite direction like you know down direction in blood may blood is going in this direction blood vessel may blood is going in upward direction so opposite movements counter currents and the substances are getting exchanged so this is called as counter current exchanger system with the help of vasa recta okay and then sir so created by multiplier maintained by vasa recta next sir juxta glomerular apparatus okay let's talk about the juxta glomerular apparatus simple sir a hai aapka nephron your nephron cute little nephron sir blood is going in this direction okay blood is coming in this direction via afferent arterial blood is coming sir these are the glomerular capillaries and here is the efferent arterial blood is going out like this look sir on the afferent arterial may there are modified smooth muscles sir there are these modified smooth muscle cells called as jg cells juxta glomerular cells they are what they are modified smooth muscles modified smooth muscle cells called as juxta glomerular cells and look sir here in the ascending limb of loop of henle till here see till here it's ascend this is the dct okay on the ascending limb of loop of henle there are these black color cells these black color cells are like macula densa they are called as not like they are macula densa Okay, these black color cells are called as macula densa. I used to remember like, sir, a hey, girlfriend boyfriend thing. Okay, so there are JG cells, girlfriend, and this black color fellow is a boyfriend. Okay, macula densa. In between boyfriend and girlfriend, who are there? There are some useless fellows. Okay, there are useless fellows, sir. Okay, like besties. Okay, they don't have any function. So there are also cells called as lactic cells. Okay, there are also cells called as lactic cells. So there are juxta glomerular cells lactic cells as well as macula densa okay macula densa now these three structures together called as juxta glomerular apparatus okay juxta glomerular apparatus so juxta glomerular apparatus may how many cells are there these are juxta glomerular apparatus may jg cells lactic cells and macula densa सर ये फंक्शन क्या है जेक्स्टा ग्लोमेरुलर ऑपरेटर्स का फंक्शन क्या है दे रेगुलेट द जीएफआर दे रेगुलेट द जीएफआर दे कैन कंट्रोल द जीएफआर दे कैन इंक्रीज द जीएफआर दे कैन डिक्रीज द जीएफआर दे अल्टर्स द जीएफआर सर दे कंट्रोल द जीएफआर ओके सो द मैक्युलर डेंसा इट प्रोड्यूसेस व्हिच सब्सटेंस इट प्रोड्यूसेस एडिनोसिन एंड इट गिव्स द फीडबैक सी दिस जेक्स्टा ग्लोमेरुलर ऑपरेटर्स व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट ऑन द ट्यूब्यूल इट इज प्रेजेंट ऑन द रीनल ट्यूब्यूल नेफ्रॉन इट इज giving feedback to the glomerulus to control the gfr so this is called as look this is called as a tubulo glomerular feedback something present that is juxta glomerular apparatus present on the tubule it is communicating to the glomerulus it is communicating to the glomerulus it is giving feedback to maintain the gfr okay so mainly who controls the tubulo glomerular feedback tubulo glomerular feedback is given by maculo densa okay so this maculo densa where it is present it is a present on ascending limb of loop of henle okay it's present on see this area so it is present on maculo densa it's present on ascending limb of loop of henle it is sensitive to which level it checks which level in the urine it checks what it checks sodium chloride levels by looking at the sodium chloride levels it understand how much is the gfr it understands okay by looking at the urinary sodium chloride levels it estimates are there how much is the gfr okay it understood it's like a brain sir it's like a brain it understood how much is the gfr uh, how, for example if less sodium chloride is there it understand their gfr decreased if it's seeing more sodium chloride 
it understands their gfr is more okay something like that so this macula densa it is a sensitive to macula densa it is sensitive to sodium chloride okay it what it gives it gives a tubulo glomerular feedback where it is present it is present on the thick part of ascending limb of loop of henle okay it's a part of it's a part of juxta glomerular apparatus what it will control it regulates the gfr it regulates the gfr okay you understand it so done sir. this is also done so now let's discuss about two hormones and let's wrap it up okay sir anti diuretic hormone anti diuretic hormone kya hai sir whenever your plasma osmolarity increases your blood is getting concentrated you are in a desert you are in a desert sir you are sweating 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 now your plasma osmolarity decreased just wait okay your plasma osmolarity decreases now that is the stimulus for the posterior pituitary to release anti diuretic hormone now this anti diuretic hormone it's coming and acting on which receptors so the anti diuretic hormone is acting on the collecting ducts on which cells principal cells on which receptor anti diuretic hormone ka receptor do you know what is anti diuretic hormone receptor sir v2 receptor a hai v2 receptor now this v2 receptor is stimulated now look look anti diuretic hormone when it acts on v2 receptor do you know which levels are elevated inside the cell camp level secondary messenger camp levels are elevated now this is cell now in this is cell do you know what happens now this cell produces this channels previously they are not there now now only whenever anti diuretic hormone is there this channel produces this channel Well, sorry. The cells produces these channels, which will absorb water. See, now you are conserving the water. Now you are in desert. Now you are reabsorbing more water. So anti-diuresis, anti-urination. So more water is reabsorbed. Okay, water is reabsorbed. So what happened to the urination? Decreased. Decreased urine. So urine volume decreased. What is the name of this channel, sir? The name of the channel is called as aquaporin two. so anti diuretic hormone implants it implants aquaporin 2 helps in water reabsorption from the principal cells in the collecting ducts in the collecting duct area may water reabsorption occurs with the help of anti diuretic hormone okay anti diuretic hormone now this question was asked in the uh, fmg exam now you try to answer it many students will go wrong sir many students will go wrong but try to answer it in the presence of anti diuretic hormone maximum water reabsorption maximum water reabsorption occurs at the level of in the presence of anti diuretic hormone maximum water reabsorption occurs at the level of if you can answer you are super if you can answer you are super sir let me check whether you can answer or not come on guys in the presence of anti diuretic hormone maximum water reabsorption occurs at which part of nephron sir it doesn't matter anti diuretic hormone hai nahi hai farak nahi okay doesn't matter sir always the maximum water reabsorption 70% of the water reabsorption occurs in pct always pct okay so even see even anti see most of the students will think sir anti diuretic hormone is acting on collecting duct So water reabsorption increases, of course. Water reabsorption increases, but maximum water reabsorption always occurs in the PCT. Anti diuretic hormone hai or nahi hai difference nahi. There is no not big difference. Sir. Okay, there is no big difference. Okay, there is no big difference. Okay, so done. Next. Now let's discuss about the disorders. Disorders of anti diuretic hormone. Problem kya hai? Sir, anti diuretic hormone nahi hai to no. ADH, anti diuretic hormone nahi hai, or anti diuretic hormone hai, anti diuretic hormone hai, a V2 receptor काम नहीं कर रहे, V2 receptor resistance, okay V2 receptors are resistant, resistant. Now tell me, sir, collecting duct में principal cells, do you think they will reabsorb water now? No, they don't reabsorb the water. 
they don't reabsorb the water so more water is going out in the urine so more urination more urination so more urination means diluted urine diluted urine sir urine dilute hone to urine is diluted sir so that urine doesn't have taste diluted urine diluted things take a coca cola and dilute it take a coca cola and put more water into it taste kam ho jata sir in the same way see diabetes insipidus iska naam ka meaning kya hai diabetes means more urination diabetes ka exact word the word ka meaning diabetes word ka meaning hai diabetes means more urination and that urine is tasteless 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 urine so diabetes insipidus condition what the problem sir either there is no anti diuretic hormone either the anti diuretic hormone nahi hai one thing anti diuretic hormone nahi hai sir nahi hai or v2 receptor resistance so based on this look sir no, right no anti diuretic hormone then it is called as craniogenic craniogenic diabetes insipidus means something problem in the brain craniogenic no anti diuretic hormone craniogenic diabetes insipidus or there is one more thing nephrogenic means v2 receptors kaam nahi kar rahe okay v2 receptors are not working v2 receptors are not working okay v2 receptors are not working okay so this is what i want you to know uh, So done. Now, एक और प्रॉब्लम है एस आई एडीएच इसमें प्रॉब्लम क्या है सर एस आई एडीएच में लेट मी चेक गाइस वन मिनट ओके एनी वे सर एस आई एडीएच एस आई एडीएच कंडीशन में प्रॉब्लम क्या है देखो एस आई एडीएच कंडीशन में सर पेशेंट इज है लंग कैंसर एक कैंसर है सर दिस इज लंग कैंसर ओके दिस इज अ लंग कैंसर सर दिस लंग कैंसर is producing excessive amount of anti diuretic hormone this lung cancer is producing excessive amount of anti diuretic hormone so this anti diuretic hormone do you know what it is doing so this anti diuretic hormone here now what it is doing is the anti diuretic hormone sir it is excessively stimulating the v2 receptors unnecessarily the v2 receptors are getting stimulated aha uh -huh, okay when more v2 receptors are stimulated more water reabsorb ho jayega okay sir more 